What is up, chat and lith? How's it going? <clears throat> hey there, UPK, yay. Ninja pears. Rack bar. Happy that it's weekend. How's it going, Jedid O'Jannon? If I'm slaying the spire, does that maybe may, yeah, make me an apex predator? I'd say so. I'd say that's some peak humor right there. How's it going, Doom Train? Healthy snacks. Dr. Ozophilus. Blender Render Man. Olivia 5K. Once met once met a person with 12 nipples. Uh, sounds made up doesn't hit. Oh dear. Oh dear. Hey there, the barnacles. If you slay the spire, does that make you a civil revengeer? I like that one too. Hey there, Jingo. Mr. Gregor. Maddie G. Have they played any of the top slash auto shooter games? We did a bit of uh, Vampire Survivors on stream. I did play that a little bit. I, I think Vampire Survivors was. Uh, a really cool concept, but a as a specific game, got really stale after a while. Um, but I really enjoyed Brotato, which is kind of the, the same overall formula, but um, was consistently challenging and played different every time. I think Brotato was really good at making you make difficult choices uh, when you had a pick from three, whereas Vampire Survivors fails to do that by and large. Speaking of, they did promise uh, post-release content for Brotato. I have no idea how long that's going to take to arrive, but uh, when it does eventually show up, we'll be checking out Brotato some more. The art style of Brotato is definitely probably its weakest point. Definitely probably? It, it is its weakest point, period. Full stop. So some some love it, some don't. That's true with, with many other games in the, the indie umbrella at large, but also roguelites, which are often indies. Uh, Monster Train really qualifies as that for some people. Whether you love it or you hate it, you have a reaction to it. Potato needs Gungeon art. Oh, yeah. I'd probably like Potato more if it just looked a bit more like, uh, say, Nuclear Throne. Kind of pixely arted with basic designs and uh, a simple color palette. Did I ever mess with the Risk of Rain games? I haven't. I've watched a fair bit of Risk of Rain, but it's not a game I've ever actually played myself. So I've sort of uh, bypassed the Risk of Rain. What's today's t-shirt? Well, it's me. <clears throat> Keep it cozy. From our uh, merch shop. Channel merch at baylalord.com, including this shirt right here. One sec. Keep it cozy. Is there a spell rogue stream plan? The dev calls it a love letter to Spire and Dicey Dungeons. That's uh, I, I've seen a bit of spell rogue. Uh, it definitely seemed like uh, there was a Dicey Dungeons influence. I, I but uh, with a more explicit statement about Spire, it probably is worth checking out. Another game up and coming in the related genre. I'll probably check out Balatro on stream just to put the questions to rest, and I can create a more formalized opinion on it. So probably in a week or two after the full release of that, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it. We ready to trounce the tower? We sure are. Alatro Lord. There's, there's a word to pronounce.
Ironclad, oh Ironclad, what awaits you today? Had a couple good runs yesterday. One that did uh, lose, actually, but I still enjoyed. <laughs> Was this run that died to the heart? We took an early brimstone. And it uh, paid off really big. As usual, carrying us all the way to Act 4, where we did, unfortunately, just barely lose to the heart. And I think part of what went wrong in this run was um, we ended up with a, a bad Act 3 pathing as a result of leaving, leaving the Burning Elite till Act 3, which prevented us from getting to a shop, even though we had many hundreds of gold. Um, and then we weren't able to efficiently spend that gold at the final shop. That's that's part of what went, what went wrong here. GB3 says, Entropic, is Entropic Brew truly random, or are different potions weighted differently? I'm not 100% certain on how Entropic Brew generates potions specifically. However, potions do have rarities within the Spire. Common, uncommon, and rare. Um, and you're more likely, of course, to find common potions than you are to find uncommon potions and least likely to find rare. I think the split is something like... 60, 30, 10, or maybe 65, 25, 10, for common, uncommon, rare. Do I ever find myself falling off on a second run after a really strong high roll first run? Oh yeah, we lose the, we lose at one often enough. Is there anything I don't like about Slay the Spire? Yeah. I don't like the... cards that uh, just don't end up having a good niche. Or that are useless because of a couple of enemies. Um, that just makes them not worth it. I don't like that Wild Strike puts a wound into your draw pile. <laughs> Ever. Um... I don't like quite how constrained you are in Act 1. I wish it was a little bit more viable to pick defensive cards early. But that's mostly an A20 thing, specifically. I don't like how the audio glitches out if you try to play too quickly. In fact, uh, uh, overall, I don't like how buggy the interface of Slay the Spire is. It's a very, very interesting game, because the... The actual gameplay mechanics of Slay the Spire work very well and have very few bugs, but the interface, the buttons that you click on, the way that you move and play cards, have practically countless ways that they can glitch out, bug, or otherwise go awry. Quite odd. And speedrunners actually abuse that to great effect. There's a lot of different things you can do by glitching the interface of Slay the Spire, such as fight an extra Act 1 boss and get an extra Act 1 boss relic, or skip combats entirely, or teleport around the map. It's, it's very strange, the shenanigans that you can pull. Hopefully these are solved in the Spire board game. Hope so. I hope so. Just proves that you don't need to be a great programmer to make a great game. Oh, Toby Fox proved that a long time ago. Have I played the board game on uh, Tabletop Simulator? Yeah, I, I played, I think, two sessions of the Slay the Spire board game. It's a really good adaptation, I, I think. It, it really captures the feel of Slay the Spire. Zizzy says, unfortunately, the Spire board game is even more breakable because of the exploit known as being bad at math. It's true. You can have infinite energy if you fail to remember to decrease your energy. Mm -hmm. 
how OP was the Watcher in the board game? I felt like Silent was actually stronger. Because the Silent seemed like she had the easiest infinite in the board game. The highest streak we've gotten so far, 10 this year is our best. Let's see. Remove a card, max health, even more max health. Or boss swap. Our act boss is Guardian, who could definitely be a tough time for the clad. I do like this formation. This might be a 14 max health start, actually. I think it's a pretty good start for Clad, the large max health. Clad gets more max health than the other characters do upon taking this option. It's a lot more health to work with in Act 1, which can be very useful. It's a lot more health to work with in Act 4, which can be very useful. Combo is great with Feed or Reaper. I'm going to do it. Let's lose all of our gold for 14 max health here. Bring us to 82 out of 89. We definitely want to start with some fights here. Yeah, these will be easy. We want to get four card rewards before this first elite, I think. That's currently the plan. Jawa Worm. I have to say, with this opening draw, it feels like I should be playing Bash Defend, as I'm guaranteed to get three strikes next turn. Double Defend Strike feels like we're not doing enough damage. So I'm going to take the 7 here. It's my instinct. I'll play this defend for sure. Hey. Okay, next turn we have a guaranteed... Uh, no, not a guaranteed kill, unless I play Bash. If we Bash defend, we can kill next turn. Take two more. Otherwise, I might take two next turn, but realistically, I think I'm allowed to double defend here. And we probably should. Yeah, because we can just strike three times now, and then kill next turn. So we save that two health. Okay, good. Get a regen potion for some healing early, even more health. We're offered a Havoc Evolve Bloodletting. Actually, Bloodletting as a first card is not bad on Clad. Trade three health for two energy. Even if you use that energy to play one defend, you can gain health from the blood from the Bloodletting card. So that's definitely useful. Jawworm is very draw dependent on how hard they are. GB three, and Jawworm definitely has the highest variance of all of the initial fights, such that Silent can either perfect the fight or take 30 plus damage, entirely dependent on your draw order. Thought I said I was going to start taking more evolves in Act 1. Yeah, that's when I'm fighting either Hexaghost or Slime Boss, and we're not. So I, wait, I immediately like this evolve a lot less for that reason. Still maybe worth thinking about here, given that there's no attack. It is, it is quite nice against the three sentries, who we probably have to face, because we're planning on doing three elites here. Am I worried about the streak on a character like Silent, considering how challenging Clad has been? Well, Silent will have different obstacles than Clad, so we'll have to hone in on different strategies to mitigate. Clad feels difficult because of the inconsistency of his card pool more than anything. There's a high baseline level of power here that allows us to almost brute force our way through Act 1 and Act 2 sometimes. But building a deck that works in the late game has been a surprising challenge. I don't think we'll have that problem on Silent. What's my case against Bloodletting Act 1? I don't have a strong one, to be honest. It's a good card. I guess this is the strongest case, right? You draw it alongside a Sender's Bane and then it does nothing. So it's occasionally a do-nothing card. But with Ironclad's deck, as long as you don't also draw a Sender's Bane, it's also always uh, useful. So there's only this really one exception, and next time we draw it, it will work. I can just not play it, right? So, is it that bad? Not really. Hmm. I get away with double defend here. I'm gonna hope so. Not exactly. Wouldn't call that getting away with it.
jerk slime. An attack card. We take the attack card. R gets Blarg with four months, slightly less than one third of a year. Thanks for nothing, Leap Year. I guess it really depends on which four months it was, whether it's slightly less or slightly more than a third of a year. Interesting. There's Rupture to go with Bloodletting. That's kind of a thing. It's an early access to scaling, which is definitely interesting. I don't mind self-harm as much with more max health here. But is that better than a headbutt? I really doubt it. We need some immediate damage option. I'll definitely take the attack card here. Not a good draw. That's okay. That's what bloodletting is for. Okay, gained health from the cultist, that's good. Get a fear potion, that's even better. And a heavy blade or a pea strike. I have been liking the early heavy blades. It's a really good incentive to get strength. Today is no different, really. Perfected strike, meanwhile, is how much? Is it 16? Or 18? It's 18 up front. So it's a reasonable amount better than heavy blade. Nitrous Oxide says, I've died more times trying to make Rupture work than trying to make Searing Blow work. That, that sounds correct. It is more steps than you'd want it to be. Um, it kind of like when I criticize Master Reality on Watcher. Rupture has the problem where you have to draw and play Rupture and then draw and play your self-harm card and then draw and play an attack card, all before the rupture actually does anything. That's too many steps. It's just too many steps. You can't do it. Not consistently enough. Hmm. Cost us like eight max health to get gold idol. I think I'll still take it. I'm definitely not going to take the current health damage. I'm definitely not going to take the curse. So we would have to trade up probably eight max health here. I think it's 10% or something. Find out. Yeah, 8 max health. Go down to 81, which is no loss of current health. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. And I will take another fight, because I would really like another Carter Ward before I fight the Elite here. I think I'll just keep both these potions. Ow. I wonder if I ever could have killed by doing more damage last turn. Seems kind of unlikely. Uh, I also can't do 25. Let's assume I'm going to play Bloodletting then and give me Bash. We can kill next turn. Definitely a painful uh, encounter, although four Grumlins would have been a lot worse. Thankfully, we did not get a potion here. Flex. Now we're talking. Flex is kind of bad with the bloodletting, but Flex Heavy Blade is, in fact, a thing. It's actually a pretty cool thing, in my opinion. And I like it with the headbutt, too. We're also going to upgrade that Flex so that it's four strength for one turn. Meaning, as long as we draw it with really any damage card, it's going to put in... Pretty substantial work. Use this here. Wow. So we can flex, bash, strike next turn. Seems like a pretty good open. What if I headbutt bloodletting, though? Well, that means it would be awake and attacking us next turn. So no, we don't headbutt anything. Never liked you. Thanks for the two months of support. Ever had a Prismatic Shard all for one deck? 
Probably. Oh, wow. <laughs> I draw the exact same hand again. Okay, that's cool. Although we can flex triple strike here. That's great. I feel like I've seen this hand before. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, now we can headbutt the flex so that we do flex heavy blade next turn. Okay, defend, defend, headbutt. And then Heavy Blade goes from 14 to 26. Boom. A pretty comfortable first Elite fight. Didn't even have to use the Fear Pot. Note that Heavy Blade works both ways. With minus two strength, Heavy Blade goes from 14 down to eight, which actually does make this card pretty bad against Legavulin specifically. Ice Cream? Oh, Bloodletting Skippers get wrecked. Now we can conserve energy from turn to turn, making bloodletting just good. Um, Fiendfire and Pummel as well are both exciting options here. Both of these are quite good. Pummel is a bit better with Flex. Fiendfire is just good in general, though, so I should probably take Fiendfire. Being red, not even a consideration, even though it's also kind of good here. But yeah, not, not even... This is a distant third, with Skip being a distant fourth. How do I evaluate seeing red in general? Not usually a good trade-off. It's only plus one energy, unlike Bloodletting's plus two. Uh, Bloodletting gets a lot of favor for being one more energy, uh, although it didn't always work that way. Uh, Prior to the final patch of Slay the Spire, this card was only one energy upgraded too, and it was a lot worse for that reason. Seeing red, I don't usually consider it worth it unless you have exhaust interactions. With Dark Embrace, it's awesome. With Feel No Pain, it's okay. If it comes upgraded free, it's okay. If you have a lot of card draw, it's a bit better. The more card draw you have, the better it is in general. They can fiend fire here. If I didn't already have Bloodletting, that uh, would be a more attractive Fiendfire. Or a more attractive uh, Seeing Red, excuse me. But since we already have Bloodletting, I have no need for it. We are going to upgrade Fiendfire, because this card does way too much damage. Cien Jondal with a prime sub and 33 months of sub port. Thank you, thank you. Blood Vial, two health per fight. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say no at all. I quite like that. This is a early relic. It means we're healing eight per fight, which is great. Um, Evolve, where'd you go? We want to headbutt, defend, defend, or maybe it's headbutt, strike, defend. Or maybe because I have ice cream, I should not play three cards. No, I don't think that's the case here. Ice cream will kick in once the dazes start piling up. Beanfire will do exactly 40, so I think we leave the two that are at 40 health alone here. Yeah, so headbutt, defend, defend. It's the line I'm choosing. Nice draw. 26 plus 10. Kill this one. And then next turn, we can kill either of these with Fiendfire. This is great. Could not have asked for a better draw there. I guess we kill the one that's hitting us, right? Surely. Get in there, ice cream. Awesome. We leave the elite fight with 51 health. 
We get a Vajra for plus one strength permanently. And now this is starting to really slap. Both the Fiend Fire and the Heavy Blade just got a fair bit better. Oh, and I can take Shockwave Pummel Burning Pact here. What great cards to find in Act 1. Are there any cards I wouldn't burn for an instant kill? Feed sometimes is the most common situation. I think taking the first shockwave is all but mandatory. Burning pack can be very good as well, but it's less likely to be important, I feel like. Yeah. And just defend, defend. Yeah. Bringing it below 40 is pretty important here. So that we can kill with fiend fire. No need to bloodletting, I don't think. Bonk. Back to where we started. Arnage or Sword Boomerang. Any boomers. Solaris, thanks for the prime sub. You're all fired. The game allowed you to take more than one card from a card reward in exchange for gold or health. Hmm. I think 50 gold or five, maybe 10 health would be appropriate prices. At least those are prices I'd be willing to pay pretty often for a second card. You don't want to allow that at the boss though. That'd be OP. I'm just questioning how hard I want a Sword Boomerang right now. Not really. I'd rather just have, like, three pummels than one Sword Boomerang. So, let's do that. Or let's hope for something like that. No. 16 per card, huh? There's no damage. If I were to headbutt a card, I guess it would be Bash. Let's headbutt Bash. It's only 25. This is a lot more. Actually, Bash is just a kill now. That's even better. Perfect. Of course, they both attack for 12, so I still take damage. Because they're jerks. Blood Potion. Heal for 20% of our max health, which is pretty generous. Dark Embrace is here. Dark Embrace is very good with these two things. Because of the bloodletting, we can afford to play it, too. Definitely not a card you want to underestimate. Um, and I think I'd like to go for the Burning Elite, too. Either Laga or Gremlin Knob. Laga is very easy. So Burning Elite Legavalin would be completely free. Burning Elite Grumlin Knob is killed by Fiend Fire. So yeah, we take Dark Embrace here. And I'm going to that shop. It is a 22 max health Grumlin Knob. That's spooky. But not that spooky. Got to not headbutt strike here. We could do strike, then headbutt the strike, but I'd rather just headbutt first so that nothing gets put on top. Question is, will I draw the Fiend Fire? I guess even if I don't, we don't die, so that's good. Fiend Fire kills, by the way. Dark Embrace does not get me closer to Fiend Fire. Shockwave would weaken, which would reduce the damage next turn if we do get hit. So it's worth playing the Shockwave. Um, what about Bash? Four strikes or something like Flex Bash Double Strike. Are there outs that don't involve Fiend Fire? Let's assume Bash Double Strike Flex. What does that do? That would be 9, 13, 19. 
That means our 11 goes to 16. So 19, 16, 16. It's not a kill. Okay. Play the shockwave. Mean fire. Easy peasy. We kill the gremlin knob. We get 35 gold. That's lots of money. A turnip. Delicious. An emerald key. We saw the pain of not having that uh, recently. And a second fiend fire. Okay. <laughs> That's maybe too much fiending. With a dark embrace, there's no way I turn this down. Although reckless charge is also kind of a thing at this time. No, we, we had uh, poor pathing, Aaron W. We couldn't get to a shop in Act 3 at all because we needed the green key. And we ended up with uh, like a thousand gold going into the Act 3 bosses. It was, it was a bad time. How do we block Guardian? Block? What do you mean block? I don't understand the question. Oh. <laughs> Ching. Could have had rupture combust. <laughs> See, I like twin strike more than sword boomerang. That's the sad truth of it. I'm going to buy a remove here. This strike's okay. Sentinel is pretty good, actually, especially with ice cream. Let's do fiend fires. Sentinel's pretty hype. I'm going to be honest. I'd rather remove a strike, though. Can we even beat Guardian? I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure hope so. I feel like beating Guardian might involve upgrading Heavy Blade here. Although upgrading Dark Embrace is also tempting. Don't need to buy a different potion. I, I think these potions are fine. Although we could have drank the blood potion there and then and bought another potion. Shockwave upgrade also pretty reasonable for Guardian. And if it weren't for the weak potion, I'd be a lot more on board with it. This is a great hand to delete. We lose three strikes right away. My goal is just to have something like Defend, Defend, Flex, Heavy Blade as our cards. Keep one energy as well. Could have played the Defend first, but I didn't want to. Well, shoot. That's a bad draw. That means we're taking a bonk, whether we like it or not. Which means it's a good time for Weak Potion. Bummer. Not that much damage, though, right? So, Heavy Blade with Flex is going to deal 58 damage. Seems good. You have to do that four times. And I'm willing to trade damage for it. Next turn. If I have four energy, I can do flex bash heavy blade next turn. So yeah, we're there. We are there. Get absolutely kabonks. GG. We make hella money. I didn't even talk about how the golden idol is going to multiply with the membership card. But uh, it's a good combo. And I think offering is really good. 
as another way to trade health for energy, but also massive card draw to make the fiend fires instantly kill things. With offering here, we'll be able to get turn one kills on a lot of Act 2 enemies. Double Tap's also got some power to it, but requires more consistency of draw, and with the Dark Embrace can do scary things with Fiendfire, which we'd rather not do. Yeah, Bloodletting's older and bigger brother. The Offering. Hmm, <laughs> Dripper or Sneko? <laughs> Wait a minute. Actually, that's a really good Sneko. Although the flex is kind of ruined. Everything else is amazing. I love ice cream with Sneko. I love fiend fire with Sneko. Very good Sneko. Um, Confi Dripper is a little spooky. We could do it. I'm taking the Sneko though get two more cards per turn, and all of our cards are now random cost, which is quite something. What a perfect shot placement right before the Elite. Heck yeah. Let me take some mixture of events along the way. Or we could take more fights. Nah. I like events here. This would definitely take bites. We would definitely take bites. In a heartbeat. Yeah, seems like a pretty good Sneko Eye, right? Power through. A powerful block card. 15 block and 2 wounds, which increases the cards in our hand, which makes the Fiend Fires even deadlier. I'll take it. Home run. Also, we get a surprise merchant. Not what I was expecting. Whirlwind is here. Whirlwind with ice cream is here. Would I buy orange pellets? I think so. I think orange pellets would be very good. Lantern is one free energy at the start of each combat. That's definitely very good. But is it good enough? I don't think so, because here's the thing. The Abacus is here to give us six block per draw pile shuffle. And trust me when I tell you, that's going to happen a lot. A lot, a lot. Sometimes on turn one, actually. Because we just offering Dark Embrace Fiend Fire and then we don't have a deck anymore. Ah. Debating whether we take the Whirlwind here. There is another shop coming up. I'd like to have enough money to buy a relic there. So I guess I buy nothing here. Box 30, thanks for the half year of support in advance. Do we want removal over Whirlwind here for Abacus? No, we never remove here because we're going to another shop. We can remove there, but we'll never remove here. Because we can't do both either, unless we get a money event. Seems unlikely. That's the reason not to buy the Whirlwind, is so that I can do stuff here. Otherwise, I'd just buy Whirlwind if there's not another shop coming up. times one, two, three, four, five. Not enough. Pretty close, though. I don't really want to defend. Let's take the one hit and then be done with it. Drink our blood potion to pick up liquid memories and get offered a sentinel Plus, now there's a card to exhaust with Fiendfire. Get in here. It is, as they say, green. Let 
Go Dark Embrace. Bash. Speed Fire you. Shockwave. Okay. The Abacus Prox on turn two. Like you do. And on turn three. And on turn three a second time. Yeah, seems good. Ooh, uppercut versus flame barrier. I've already got a shockwave. Let's take a flame barrier. Diversify our block portfolio just a bit here. It's also a good way to deal damage. Didn't proc on turn four. Alas. Removal is only 50? That's a bad deal, Cleric. I leave. The beggar looks to the floor as you pass. You will never make a difference. You never do. Kind of rude. Uh, do we upgrade what here? We could upgrade Flame Barrier, the other Fiend Fire. Shockwave's a better upgrade now. Get that shockwave upgraded. Oh. Reaper is here on sale. I can exactly afford Reaper remove, or we can do Reaper feel no pain. Reaper feel no pain seems pretty obscene here. It's also hand drill, centennial puzzle, art of war is okay. But yeah, I'm thinking Reaper plus Feel No Pain with this deck. It's just too good to ignore. Both of those things get in here. How about I fight three elites? With Reaper, I have no fear at all here. Although maybe I should. Oh, this is fine. We just play Fiend Fire here. Sentinel gets deleted, so I get three energy back. I have tons of energy starting next turn, although we do get a hit this turn. I don't see any way that I could power through in Fiend Fire here, unless I were to do something like gamble the power through, then Liquid Memories it into my hand, but that's completely excessive. There's no need for that. Just take 20. It's fine. Okay, this is less fine. That might merit Gambler's Brew. Sufficiently bad draw. Yeah, I'm going to gamble all of this. That sounds fine. Sneko do giveth, and Sneko also sometimes taketh. That is Sneko's prerogative. 18 per, so we just need three. So we can do Defend Fiendfire. And I will. The Strike. Not bad. Get 38 gold, the maximum possible. Or actually, no, not from an elite. We could do 35, right? Never mind. Still a lot of gold. Uh, Aura Calcum for automatic block. Six block if we have none. And a second Dark Embrace, which I am going to click on because every Dark Embrace we have is going to power the Abacus further. 
Regal Pillow, however, we're going to be skipping because we can heal by playing Reaper. There's no need to heal by resting. Featherfall TT says, finally got to play Brotato via the Xbox Game Pass. That's awesome. As I said earlier in the stream, Brotato did promise uh, post-release content, some DLC or some such. So we'll be revisiting Brotato at some point. This is not a great turn. I prefer to kill the the vent gremlin, but playing Dark Embrace is also relatively important here. Oh, at three cost, I don't think I want to. Headbutt, heavy blade. Keep one energy. Okay, this is good. Excellent. You're alive still. That's fine. Should have just bashed the Grim Leader. But we get Abacus Block, so we're leading at full health anyway. This is perfect. Bonk. All powers will be upgraded from here on out. Definitely a bit of an iffy egg, because many powers upgrade to have a cost discount. Well, 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 we do get offered bites. Trade our strikes for our bites with the blood vial here. The pale figures gasp as you take out the blood vial. The master's blood, the master's blood, the master's blood. They all chant fervently as the tall one bows before you. Drink from his blood and become one with him. The chant growing louder, you consume the contents of the vial. Your vision immediately warps and fades to darkness. You wake up some time later alone. An intense hunger passes through your belly. You must feed. Well, that bites. Surely we could have just drunk the blood without the vampire showing up? No, it's the fervent chanting. That's the important part. You need them there to, to chant at you. Otherwise, you will not gain the powers of the vampire. Ozma Glacius with the five months. Fear the old blood. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Silvardo. You know, I never could get my dad to tell me what my blood type is. Every time I asked him, he would just tell me to be positive. But he would never tell me. No refunds, Twishat. Taking another fight or taking an event... Feel an event, honestly. I want Coliseum. Relic for a curse? I'll take it. I'll take Relic for a curse today. Omelet? Now all attacks are also upgraded. Wait, order! Order! Hold on. That's wrong. My bites. No! Not my bites. Are bites even good with Sneko? Yes. Yeah, because. Because they cost zero sometimes, you're just going to play them sometimes. So they'll provide passive healing, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I think they're quite good. They also deal one more damage than a strike does, which is sometimes a thing.
course, sometimes we just delete them with Fiend Fire, and that's okay, too. That book was squished. Now we have a boat thingy, 14 block, starting on turn two, and a bludgeon thingy, just a casual bludgeon plus for our Sneko Deco. Seems worth it, right? 42 damage for one attack is a pretty big bonk. Nice line of relics, right? We got we got some good relics this run. And we are not done. Not even close. Uh, let's make our best block better. Actually, I like Flame Barrier upgrade a bit more. Maybe power through next. Do I ever upgrade the Feel No Pain? That's also worth considering here. We're promised free bludgeon. Normal cost bludgeon, I refuse to pay for that. You hear me? I refuse. Delete this stuff? Guess so. We don't need to heal in a boss fight. Here. Delete this garbage. Now we're talking. Feel no pain, Dark Embrace. Dark Embrace again. Offering. Perfect. Flex is leaving. Flex is leaving. We can just bludgeon this thing to death. I'm going to ignore the minions, by the way. Although that seems to be the limit of our exhausting. We've exhausted our ability to exhaust cards, although I see we've also exhausted the boss's health pool here, so that's good. Bonk. A very decisive battle in our favor. Collector dead even before being able to debuff us. And now we have the Holy Grail of Synergies Complete, which is... Corruption, plus Feel No Pain, plus Double Dark Embrace, plus The Abacus. That means we can do basically infinite block for very little effort, all told. And the Corruption even saves us a boatload of energy. And then we took a Velvet... No. Um, and then we took Philosopher's Stone, I guess. Probably better that over Black Blood here. We want Dead Branch at this point? Probably. Well, maybe with Double Dark Embrace we actually don't. Father of the Sun and the Holy Corruption. Batman. There's no world where this isn't Philo. I could see a world where this is Black Blood. Although we really ought not to need it. The healing, that is. Giving one strength to enemies is a little bit annoying, but I think having the extra energy will probably pay off for those turns where everything costs three. Oh, what a lovely path. What a lovely path. Lots of upgrades, lots of elites, lots of shops is exactly what we want to see here. I'd, I'd like to get 999 gold, quite frankly. I would super take that. Does Boss Swap take Black Blood out of the Relic Pool? Asks External Mega. Yes, it does, which is arguably an upside to the Boss Swap, uh, especially on Defect and Silence, where you remove the Ring of the Serpent and the Frozen Core from the Relic Pool. Jump. Bonk. Power Pot's pretty strong. True Grit could be a reusable way to exhaust something, which is 
arguably worth taking, although we probably would need to upgrade the True Grid. I think I'm still worth taking. It's, I think it's still worth taking, considering how many fires we have. Yes, I'll take a True Grit, and I like the Power Potion enough to lose the Flex Spot, I believe. Bought one Orb Walker, yes, but what about double Orb Walker? For a rare relic, which could be Dead Branch. Sixteen times five um, is eighty. We're just shy here. I could use either of these potions to make Fiendfire kill this. I'm down to use the power potion here. Is Dead Branch really that good? Well, when you've got a corruption in your deck, Dead Branch does very broken things, as a general rule. That said, I don't think it would be my favorite rare relic to get here. I think I'd prefer... Actually, Gurya would be very good. Um, Fossilized Helix or Incense Burner would be very good. Mango would be really appreciated. There's lots of rare relics that are very good. Pocket Watch would be obscene. What powers help kill now? All of them. It's actually just plus one card in hand. Hervalicious, thanks for the 26 months of support. Much love. Take four headbutt bludgeon. Yeah, I've got basically no damage. Well, there's Fiendfire. Fiendfire kills. Let's go with Fiendfire. And there's Mango. We also get 65 gold, which is a ton of gold. A ton of gold. It's actually double that, right? 130 gold of purchasing power. So enough money to buy a whole relic. Plus 14 max health. Plus an Evolve Plus. Hmm, how do I feel about Evolve? I don't like it that much with Sneko Eye because we're already drawing seven per turn. This would be the time to add it though. Meh. And we get a bonus relic in a large treasure chest. The Singing Bowl, allowing us to skip cards to gain max health. Ah. And then we can take a Mummified Hand and a Feed Plus and a Lee's Waffle and a Disarm. Good lord, this shop. Definitely gonna buy Mummified Hand here. All powers make a random card in hand free. Very good. I'm gonna buy the disarm. Lose two strength. And yes, I can buy both of these if I want to. This is only seven max health, but max health is great. And the feed will be probably more than seven. Probably more than seven. It's a late feed, but not too late. Oh yeah, I've got a curse to remove. And another shop coming up. Okay, I'm not gonna do the waffle then. Sounds good. And that would be more reason to go to an event over the... Or a combat over the event. But we haven't seen Mind Bloom. Yeah, I'll take an event. Um, we could have also gotten six max health off of Sensory Stone. Instead, we get to lose one defend, which is just fine by me, too. An extra remove. Not the ideal remove, not with corruption, but still perfectly fine. Corruption and play, right? That's right. Don't play that. Keep that card.
So let's do a big fiend fire. Like this first. Probably feed next turn. Perfect. The full omelet. All cards are upgraded. All of them. Especially this one. That's pretty cool. Although it makes all these rest sites kind of bad. Uh, can I skip any of these? Not really. Not if I. Not unless I also skip this shop. Which I'm actually okay doing, right? Well, that doesn't skip a rest site, actually. That just skips the shop. Hmm. Igtacular. Can't slay a spire without breaking a few eggs. Get the choice here, right? All right. We get the strawberry. Up to 106 max HP. The number keeps climbing. And our next opponent will be Nemesis. Pretty suspicious. No more cards. Please give me the Sentinel, thank you. Bank gives us money per floor and then breaks upon spending money at a shop. Well, that's a good reason not to go to the shop, I suppose. Limit break. Double your strength. Get in here. Now we just need a demon form plus, or even an inflame plus would be okay. Cool with either of those things. Get to feed. All right, I'll be back. a bottle, healing us to 30% health if we die. Seems alright. Having a pommel plus seems like it might be an okay idea, actually. I don't have that many good reusable attacks. Especially not ones that draw cards. Alright, let's upgrade that Feel No Pain. One last elite. The giant head rematch. This time it's personal. The 
Does InfoMod display how much block we've gotten from the Abacus? Yes. Currently, it's activated 11 times. Although I think it'll do that a bit more before all is through here. Letter opener will deal damage every time we play three skills in one turn, which happens a lot. Second disarm, second sentinel, or a body slam. I retain block, so I don't think I want the body slam. Although, Abacus. Let's take one more disarm. We're fighting the awakened one, after all. Hundred and fourteen max HP. Seems pretty okay. Yeah. Glorious. Deck is dumb. Double pommel strike. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, turn one, by the way. And we'll upgrade... I guess power through? I guess power through. Looks like a painful turn one. So Waken One Boss will gain strength with each power we play, so we gotta be a little careful about which ones we play. Although I think this deck plays the ball, and then we're just playing the disarms. See, we can't kill you, right? 19, 12, no. Also, I don't, don't have enough energy for that. Playing defend is a waste because of Oracalcum. So we don't play that either. Just take 21 here and then try not to die next turn. Fortunately, easier said than done. Dark and Bryce, why are you so expensive? Very rude. I'm still going to play you, just so you know. Oh, good. Okay, that worked out. So now I can play Bludgeon and Fiendfire. Like this. And only now is Corruption available to us. We'll play this as well. Order. 
you. Disarm once first. Could I maybe land feet on this fool? That'd be really convenient. Take it. make as much block as we want, kind of by redrawing the same few cards endlessly. Quite powerful. Infinite. Oh, infinite over. Uh, that's fine, though. I can kill you with letter opener. GG. Yeah, we've we've a increased the average on Abacus now from 1.6 to per turn to 2.8 per turn. Starting to make a lot of block here. These two should not be much more difficult. It's not a very good time to fiend fire, huh? I think we just take the hit. Maybe play one more bite. One more bite. And then let it all go. Seems okay. Limit break plus, so I can just play this for one strength. Cool. Now I play corruption. Okay, that is where the turn ends. Ms. Katonic says, is turn average for relics calculated off turns total in the run or since obtaining the relic? It's since you obtained the relic. Doesn't count before that. Why so expensive, though? Whatever, I'll just fiend fire this. Is that okay? I think that's okay. Those two got very toasted, and we made hundreds of block along the way. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this, the heart of the spire, the source of all this card draw. You ready your blade, dealing 2278. The heart squirms and bleeds, but is ultimately still pounding. Hello and welcome to Heston the Bean. Heston said, I just did a run where I had chat GPT choose me what cards to put in the deck, and it really likes Concentrate. I ended up dying to the Act 2 boss with three of them. <laughs> well, there you go. Nice try, chat GPT. I think your problem was that it has chat in the name, quite frankly. A 
I'll take the feed fire upgrade. <laughs> Aldrin? How about another bludgeon and another sentinel? Nunchaku is okay. Definitely taking bludgeon. Double bludgeon decks are cool. Our potions are plenty good, so I don't think I need cauldron. Let's go card remove on one of these bites. And ceasing top for the fiend fire, of course. And uh, the Nunchaku, too. And yes, we have all three eggs. It is, in fact, very silly. If I wanted more strength, Rupture is not the worst idea. Screw it. Let's do it. Take a Rupture Plus. How could Claw have done this? How's it going, A2A, Felzen? Could Claw have done this? Pursue Claw. For your sudden yet inevitable betrayal. Alright, remove your artifacts. I don't think I want to play Disarm. Might as well block five. We'll draw eight cards next turn. Get 14 block. We should be fine. We've got second wind and both fiend fires in the draw pile. We drew corruption. We're good. We're good. Yeah, and we got fiend fire. Zero cost fiend fire. All right, lose these cards. Kill the shield first, maybe. Do that. Seems like a shield first kind of situation. And now, the bonkening. Get bonked. Get Ginger, making us immune to weaken. We're immune to weaken, immune to frail. All of our cards are upgraded. This is a pretty good entry into the heart here, especially with 132 hit points. What a chunky run. I expect this to be a rather one-sided encounter here for Heart. We will take some damage to Beat of Death, so it's not like we're going to perfect it, but we can do some pretty sick things here. Am I okay losing Bloodletting? I suppose that I am. And it was well worth it. Bonk. Double bonk. Damage capped on turn one. Fifty one. Turns a bit worse. I'll be just play the disarm. Don't really want a fiend fire here, though that would do damage. Disarm. Oh, nice. Okay, so we don't take very much at all here. Now this does nothing. I 
Give me two strength. Let's limit break, then corruption. Get lots of strength here. strength. Easy peasy. I skip disarm before artifact. When the heart applies artifact, it also purges the negative strength status. So stacking extra minus strength on the heart at that moment actually just gets completely wiped out. Part of the heart's uh, combat pattern, basically. Don't talk about it all that often, but it is always there as part of this fight. GG. That's a clean victory. And a very powerful Sneko run. GG. Absolutely wrecked. Indeed. That's right, and if it's temporary minus strength, it does worse than being wiped out. Piercing Whale or Dark Shackles on the buff turn will buff the heart's strength by accident. Evil Muffins, all hail Twitch chat, a new channel cutie. Welcome aboard. One and all. How much health would the heart need to have to win this fight? Uh, let's see. We killed it on the 4x15 turn. We would have blocked that no problem. I think we survived the 6x15 as well. So it'd have to be the 8x15 that kills us. So the heart would have had to have another 6 turns times 200 health. Another 1,400 hit points at least, I think. A lot more health. And that's including the fairy. GG. Now, what Twitch chat has it been done? The spire sleepeth. So shall I. Not too bad. One of the strongest runs we've had in a while. Eruption, Sneko, Ridiculous Block, Abacus. We didn't need Abacus that much. Um, although it was fully once every other turn by the very end there. And I think in the Heart fight, if we had needed to... Actually, I didn't counter survival against Heart with this thing. Potentially, we could have survived a very long time indeed. With the Abacus. So, maybe more than... 1600 health. It would be cool, FM Dot, if there was some kind of like gore thing or deck check of some sort at the end. There was a deck builder a while ago called. Oh no, I've forgotten the name. Ah, it's escaped me. There was a deck builder a while ago that came out where at, at the very end, the, the final boss had unlimited hit points and your run was sort of scored by how much damage did you deal to the final boss within a certain number of turns rather than, a, a, you know, with, rather than you beating the boss or losing to the boss. It's a how much score do you do to the boss?
Tainted Grail Conquest. That's the one. Thank you, uh, Simeon. Yes, that's from Tainted Grail. Mario Speedwagon says, What's the difference between a tasty waffle and one that burps a lot? One's a Belgian waffle and the other's a Belchin waffle. Oof. Evil Muffins. Let me get you on that cutie list. Lest I forget. I did not play Tainted Grail on stream, no. Quixo says, one of your favorite interactions in Spire is the bloody idol and the question mark that trades gold for hit points, the knowing skull. Have any interactions like that? I think one of my favorite is the interaction between static discharge on defect, the card that deals damage every time you take, uh, generates lightning when you take attack damage. And the Tungsten Rod, which reduces damage when you take it. If the Tungsten Rod reduces incoming attack damage to zero, you take no damage, but you still generate lightning orbs via static discharge. I think that's pretty cool. All right, Twitch chat. Next up, we're going to go again as the clad here. See if we can get the streak up to three before that happens. I'm going to take a quick break, refill the legs, stretch the water. Back in a few minutes. Great Okuna says, what games am I currently playing off stream? Currently working through Final Fantasy VII Remake, um, as well as the occasional game of Age of Empires II Definitive Edition for my current distractions. All right, Twitch chat, back in a few. Please don't go nowhere.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. I had a burrito, and I feel empowered to play more Spire for all of you. Hey there, Lishmail. Have I fought the shopkeeper in Cobalt Core? Yes, we have. We've also won, although it's quite the fight. Do we know my average deck size for clad on a successful heart kill? That was part of my run stats breakdown. Let's see. Stats? No. What was it? Statistics? Wait. Data. That's the one. There we go. <clears throat> My 400 uh, heart kills retrospective will have a look at average deck size. I, I think somewhere in there. So you might be able to get a, a number on uh, average clad deck size. If I had to guess, it would be somewhere in the 30 to 35 card range. That retrospective did make it to YouTube. I should have updated the link when it did, but I didn't. But it should be on the YouTube, yeah. Another chance for 14 max health. Interesting to be offered that again. Hmm. A little bit of a weaker act one. A little bit. Not the worst, mind you. And in fact, there's a lots of rest sites path if we want one. Although I think I'm looking more at something like this. Three elites, only one upgrade though. Going into slime boss is a bit tough. Do I think my really easy wins lower my ability in really hard runs? Does give me less practice at those, but I, I wouldn't say that it does. So random rare card, one hit point enemies, 14 max health, or ye old boss swap. I could maybe get behind a random rare in these circumstances. Definitely could work out really well if I got a decent one. But there are a couple of duds that could hurt us. We do have access to easier pathing if that's the case. Maybe I'll just go another 14 max health. That worked out really well last time. What is a donkey's favorite breakfast cereal? Cheerios, because burro eat o's. That's terrible, thank you. Fourteen max health, a little on the boring side. True. Doesn't mean it's bad though, and allows us to face tank early damage like this. Thirteen health. What gives? Please stop. Don't you just hate it when the green slime never stops attacking? Quite tough. Can't stop, won't stop. Literally incapable of stopping. Early Metellicize. I like that as a floor one pick, especially. This is really good into Jawworm, for example. Would I mind explaining my pathing options had I taken Boss Swap? So early elites are a bit more threatening with boss swap. It's not necessarily viable to go fire into elite on floor seven, but instead we could go over on this side. There's rest site into rest site into 
getting a relic from the chest, and then we can maybe fight an elite or two, or we could even opt out um, and go to the shop or something. So basically, the more different combinations of fire and elite that you can make, the better, I think, boss swap tends to be. The Telesize against Cultist is not too bad either. One strike this time. Uh-oh. Actually, no, that's what I wanted to draw. But next turn... Next turn, I take a lot. And even had I played one more strike, it wouldn't be enough. Oh. I do like Anger, zero cost damage that self-duplicates. Very good for the early fights, very good for the early elites, very good for the slime boss. Iron Wave is medium. You could take Iron Wave here, but I wouldn't call it good. Yeah, we'd have a lot less health right now if I hadn't taken the starting bonus that I did. So I'm pretty happy about it. Wish they both attack. That's fine. Kill you. And health at least went up here. By a bit. Searing blow. Not today, Searing Blow. Do we ever go double anger into Slime Boss? I'm kind of down for it. That said, Perfected Strike's also not terrible and is a pretty good first card going into the Elite as well, or next attack going into the Elite. And we can upgrade that Perfected Strike to really hit hard in the Elite fights coming up, which will also matter a lot for this fight. So upon review, Perfected Strike seems pretty okay here. And given that we already have an Anger, I think that's what I'll choose. can also take money for a Curse, but no shop forthcoming. So I don't think we want to. Just taking 50 gold for next act, realistically, seems perfectly fine. P-Strike has been known to slap a slime. Indeed, it's quite good at that. What's my max damage output here? 1830. Not enough to kill you, huh? Bummer. So who, who are we killing first here? And Slime's pretty likely to debuff us next turn. So we should probably kill the rat first. Do something like this. If we kill the rat right now, we become vulnerable. So I want to do it next turn. Perfect. Although I won't be able to finish off the slime next turn, so it will attack us with Vulnerable. Instead, maybe it's better to double defend, strike the slime once. They're both attacking, and there's no way out of here. We'll just have to take some damage. Great. Okay, health is holding steady. This blood potion heals a lot, thanks to the starting bonus we took. And a wild strike, cleave, or pummel. We don't have any answer to multi-enemy fights currently. We're fighting slime boss later. These things make cleave pretty good. Looks like we'll want some strength to go with the cleave, but that's only if we can find some. This could also help if we're fighting sentries as our first elite. Um, either way, we upgrade the Perfected Strike, I believe. With a suboptimal draw order, this next Elite could definitely hurt quite a bit. So we really have to hope that we get something at least somewhat favorable. Otherwise, we're in trouble here. Three sentries. We drew Perfected Strike and Cleave at the same time. That probably means we don't get to play Metallicize, but is enough damage up front that I think we're fine. This is arguably one of our better matchups as well. We 
we should be able to kill one on turn two, and indeed we can. And we can fully block the incoming damage, although we take another 10 next turn. It's not my favorite. Seems unlikely that we can finish either of them next turn. Um, if we strike three times here, we bring them to 18 or so health. We need three more strikes. Probably that takes two draws, so I think I'd rather target the middle one here. So we can kill it before its next attack, two turns hence. Rather than trying to kill the front one next turn, which seems very unlikely. Alright, Metallicize finally down. Well, it's still dwindling. And yes, here's the kill. As expected. Good. Hmm, very good. Now give me defense. Close enough. One short of a kill, sadly, but we only take two more. Good fight. Very good fight. Get a Juzu bracelet, not exactly encouraging, as a first relic. That second elite looking pretty daunting with no potion either. How about a combust? That's a good way to deal with multi enemies, especially the slime boss later. We to we trade one health per turn to deal five damage per turn to all enemies. How's it going, Leaf Blade Fighter? Thanks for those hundred bits. Any advice for A20 Heart Defect? You pretty consistently beat the Act 1 boss and then take huge of damage in Act 2 hallway fights and die about halfway through. I would recommend trying to pick up and upgrading a block card in Act 1. At least one. One upgraded Leap, one upgraded Charge Battery, Auto Shields Plus, Equilibrium Plus, even a Steam Barrier Plus. Um, these can all really help with your Act 2 Defect because of all the frail that happens and all the large damage values. It's easier for Defect to throw up a good block card, I think, than it is to kill an enemy quickly, usually. So taking a little bit more defense might actually go a long way. That said, you still have to balance it with good front-loaded offense, so make sure you're looking for um, any AoE you can get your hands on, whether it be Sweeping Beam or Dark Embrace. Take it and upgrade it. Self-repair also goes a very long way, but only works if you can actually get through the fights, of course. Was it correct to pick up the Juzu? It might not have been. I'd prefer a fight here, definitely. But we could still get a fight here, mind you. It'd be a better fight. Or we could upgrade two random cards for 27 health. This is no position to do that. I don't think so. Leave. You walk around it wondering what could have been. Go here, maybe. I don't feel like I can fight two more elites. This is either Knob or Lega. No, they destroy me. That's better. For every five cards in the deck, heal upon entering a rest site. Unfortunately, that's also not an immediate benefit. I think we've low rolled enough here that I cannot fight the second elite. We're too likely to die to this combat. And even if we did prevail, the next elite would probably lay us low. So I'd rather take some more combats. Try to get up to two better potions. And fight this elite. We might go through the shop, depending on how we feel. Badly. We feel badly. Ow. Probably better to play Metallicize over Defend. We take two more this turn, but we'll block presumably three more on the next turn. Maybe not. Or our new event chances spread out was Juzu. Here's the breakdown. According to InfoMod. Seems neat. I think that Metallicize was the wrong play. Either way, we heal a little bit here. We do get a potion. 
And we could take a Flex, Intimidate, or a Clash, none of which are very good. Is a Shrine not an event? It's a different kind of event. Bit weird. Like a rarer tier of event. Aaron W says, this is probably an impossible question, but do you have any tips for when to change deck strategy? Yeah, I think I think the answer to that is is actually to to not not shape your picks around an overall deck strategy to begin with. Try to evaluate the cards one at a time as for how they modify the deck and how they tackle upcoming challenges. Less trying to build a shiv deck and more trying to build a deck that can build that can beat slime boss. Then if you get to act 2 and you see champ and there's no accuracies, but there are being poison cards offered, then taking those poison cards can make sense as a way to get past champ. But if you think of it, uh, if you try to think of it as, oh, I should pivot my shiv deck to a poison deck, it can be a little bit harder to conceptualize when to pick what, I think. Yeah, stay open is a decent way to phrase that. Don't think in archetypes is probably helpful advice, too. I don't think I call this potion here. We'd like that in the elite fight. Well, I don't like taking eight on turn one as clad, especially then if I cannot kill. Dang it. Eat more, huh? Bummer. Ouch. The freaking slaver, man. Offering is here. Okay, finally some good news. Since we have sustained from the Eternal Feather, I'm more than happy to click Offering. And having Offering plus the Combust actually makes a Rupture into a decent card pick. I think I am going to go for the shop. We're in a relatively dire spot. We need to make sure we're beating Slime Boss here. And I'd like to look at some powers. What the heck is this? Hello? Just the nastiest fight in Act 1, it is. Good news is we can kill the green slime on turn 1 with uh, Perfected Strike into presumably Combust. Act 1 doing what Act 1 does. My potion here. That's a pretty good potion. Buy a new potion. I'm going to use this now. Order. Or deal 12. No, Apo. But yeah, order. No. <clears throat> but my face, though, is 12 block. We should deal 9. We do have the Blood Potion to keep us alive here, so I'm not too, too, too worried. We should be pretty worried. Hey there, Frost Prime. Good to see ya. Good luck is definitely something we could use right about now. We didn't get a potion? Good lord. Terrible. Did we go to the fire? Skip this elite? No, I can't skip another elite this act. That's not acceptable. I'm going to fight this elite one way or the other. I'm going to take armaments. I'm going to take armaments. Well, that's a nice little safety mechanism here. Fairy in a bottle is certainly tempting at 11 hit points. Not exactly good cards here. I guess we could take Pen Nib. Or I could mirror what? Perfected Strike Plus is our best mirror. Oof. And that would mean no remove. Or we could do remove and one of the other potions. 
Do I really need the fairy, though? I think so. Not for the elite, but for the slime boss? Yeah, I think so. That would let me upgrade armaments, which would be quite nice. Tough call overall. Mirror offering, so we can go out on our own terms. Love it. Yeah, I'm going to take the fairy here. I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to buy anything else. Perfectly happy with that, I think. Hope. I pray. Rorg. Go with the knob. And we know our exact damage next turn, so we can figure out what to do from here. Yeah, it looks like the fairy is going to go. It's a question of, do we also lose the blood potion? I don't think I get to play this combust, unfortunately. Which means we do what? If I Arma... It would have to be Arma Anger, then. We do 14 this turn, bringing it to 35. We do 20 next turn, bringing it to 15 with Voln. 15 with Voln is pretty easy to do with two Angers. Better use the blood than the fairy? I don't see any way to use just the blood, though. If I could get through this fight using just the Blood Potion, I would, but I, I don't see that happening here. What I do see is that we can use the Fairy and keep the Blood Potion. Yeah, even by playing Combust, I don't think we can get a kill next turn, right? No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, and we can't play the Combust because then I lose the Fairy to the Combust next turn. Robsor says, what about Arma on Combust with two strikes and cleave? Let me double check that. That's still 20, right? Bash, stri bash strike, strike, cleave is the same as bash, cleave. I believe. Yeah, it is. Um, so we would do 14 plus 12, 26 plus 20, 46. Not enough to kill. And then we die. Like, Combust uses the fairy, and then the knob kills us. Just to be clear. So yeah, we don't play the Combust. We lose the fairy next turn. All right, because with only two health here, right? If we play Combust, we're at one. And then when I end turn, Combust kills. We revive with less than 28 health, and then we die again. And really die, for real. Pedro Biagioni, thanks for the prime sub in the 26 months. Oh, it's actually 26. We would have lived on one again. I think. You. We get Akabeko and a Block Potion. 32 health, Blood Potion, Block Potion. This should be enough to beat Slime Boss. And I'm allowed to take a Carnage as well, which is pretty good. I'll take a Carnage. And I still think... Actually, 41 health, excuse me. Uh, and I still think I want to upgrade Armaments alongside the Offering. This can allow us to upgrade several other cards at the same time. Although upgrading Combust for Slime Boss is potentially meritorious also. You don't like this deck? It's not a good deck. This is It's a pile of cards, for sure. And sometimes that's what it takes. The pile of cards that sums up to beating Slime Boss is the pile of cards that gets to go to Act 2. It's the pile of cards that gets to pick a Snekawai. 
<laughs> it's the pile of cards that gets to transform itself eventually. Please don't kill me, Mr. Slime. I'm going to die. Oh, well, maybe not. That's promising. So I could do Peace Strike and Carnage Plus here. Ash on top. That does split. Or I could keep some of my health and try to set up a better split. With the Combust in play, I think we just go now. Yeah. And even if we get double 18, which we don't, things are pretty survivable. This one always attacks for 18 next turn, so let's bash cleave this one. Deal 25, bring it to 29, and then Combust automatically splits it next turn. We never get attacked here. You take 12, but whatever. Now you're dead. Excuse you. No one said you were allowed to continue this nonsense. Take one here. Kill the one that's debuffing me. All right, we get to go to Act 2. The pile of cards has done it. Revived for at least another floor. And we can pick up a Feed or a Fiend Fire, both of which are pretty spicy. I like Feed with Armaments in particular. Feed doesn't go all that well with Combust. Do we drink our Blood Potion now? I... Think so? I think so. Energy potion's pretty good. Also kind of down to leave it on the ground. Keep both of these potions till next act. But no, I'll drink it. I'll drink it and pick up the energy pot. And pick up the feed. Dex bad, so just exhaust the deck. You know, you might be right there. What about dex bad, just transform the deck? Alternately, deck is bad, so just have four energy with a eternal feather. And deck is not so bad. Dripper with the Eternal Feather is pretty easy, actually. But the Pandora's Box could transform a whole bunch of cards, making Perfected Strike a lot worse. Actually, now that I think about it, that does seem risky. We would certainly need a good roll with the P-Box. I'd rather have the guarantee of the Dripper here. We could play more bad cards. You're right. I like Dripper a little bit more with the huge max health, too, as it means we have more total hit points to spend during an act. Speaking of acts, this one looks tough. I think we go to this shop and then decide which elite to fight. We have to fight one of these, right? Elite, elite, elite. No way around this. We have to be ready. So might as well go to a shop. Could do two events. Hardpool's tough. Let's do two events. Bird nerds. This is fine. In fact, it's enough damage to knock one out of the air, so we could even knock you out of this guy here. Let's do that. Leave first so that the Akabeko damage applied to the others. What the heck? Terrible. Just awful. Actually, wait. No, not even the energy potion. Actually, yes, the energy potion. Energy potion saves 15 here. Let's do it.
And then I can also block pot for max value, so I might as well. Use both potions here. Feels very bad to do that, but it basically removes all of the incoming damage, which is very nice. And we get to upgraded feed next turn, which is even better. Wait, you're not on low health. Although now you are. Mm -mm. Hmm. Take four is better than playing offering. All right. Take four. Pretty good fight overall. We still have a potion. We have a disarm. Great for book of stabbing. Great for snake plant. Great for heart. Great for exhaust energies. I'll take them all for the. I'll take it for all those reasons. Charmy Dud, thanks for the prime sub. The half metric year get. Gigantor says, does feed with magic flower heal for six, gain four max health? That's exactly what it does, yes. This saves six right now, and upgrades feed. Oh, potions, my potions. It was nice knowing you. Ooh, that's a good armor. Upgrade disarm, upgrade metallicize to shut this foe down. Good. does more damage. And I want to discard Carnage. Permanently. Thank you for being very weak. Seems like it might be offering time, especially if it lands us the feed this turn. Or the full block. That's fine, too. This kills, but I want to eat. We can kill next turn if we get attacked for 21. We don't, so I will take two to heal four. Probably. Hopefully. Hopefully. Take four to heal four. Still worth it, but bummer. You have to stop, sir. There we go. All right, take six, heal four was still worth it. Given the uh, permanent increase in max health. These cards are no good, unfortunately. Up. Who's nine health gain fifty gold right before the shop? Kind of worth it. We could trade face, which might be worth it, but could also be quite bad. If we got the serpent head, we'd get fifty gold immediately. Surely this will be a good phase, right? I like the guaranteed fifty gold, but I do also like the face tr trade quite a bit in this position. Especially Serpent Head would be good. You know what? Let's do it. I'll trade. Kaka! Nice face. Nice face. We now feel more talkative. And <clears throat> I can buy some potions. Which I will do. Duplication potion, definitely. Sneko Oil or Energy Potion. I think Sneko Oil's really strong for this elite fight. So let's take that. Draw five and then randomize the cost of cards in our hand. Nice. And I'll still go to the shop. Because I don't really want to fight anything, mainly. But also... 
we can try to get strength? Or what here? There's the rupture I asked for, right? Yeah, rupture combust. It's on sale. Give it a shot. We can remove one strike. Or defend. Sure. Not in love with how that is, but uh, it is. Fighting two elites seem reasonable? Not at all. Let's take a heal, a 12 hit point heal. Um, and let's upgrade probably Carnage. Although I'd like to be able to upgrade Rupture. Carnage seems like a fine upgrade. All right, can we beat one elite? That's currently the only real question here. Terrible. I'm open-minded to using Snack Oil out of the gate here. We could do Armaments, Strike this one, Perfected Strike this one, take 13 damage. That's not too, too, too bad. But surely we can do much better. What I like about uh, Snack Oil here is that even if we randomize the cost of the whole hand, Armaments will be able to upgrade all 10 cards, which is pretty cool. Let's do it. And we get free Arma. I accept, because now I can play Armaments, Strike this one. Combust is worth thinking about, although I can't Combust and kill you, so I think it's going to be Metallicize, Perfected Strike. Strike this guy one time. A slightly better turn than we would have had otherwise. But now we're stuck with a bunch of three cost cards, so maybe not. We also drew Cleave on exactly the wrong turn, which does not bode well. And then we drew... Oh my god, are you kidding me? Well, that's bad. That's bad on so many levels, I don't even know how to adequately express it. Gremlin Leader is out for blood. Dupe Disarm here? I don't think so. No, I, we'd rather dupe the Carnage on the Leader. We have to kill it. That's the only way out of this fight. And that's not something we're doing this turn, one way or another. We're Carnaging you. Probably Disarm Defend. Don't like being weak. At least we have Offering next turn. Could I actually just strike? No. Okay, okay. Arma's back, so we can bash plus the leader. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay, no more fat gremlins, but we do get attacked again. Because there is no mercy from this leader. No mercy at all. Please cease your assault. So this would be the time to think about Duke Pot, but it still has negative two strength, so I'm not really that afraid. Can also just go Combust Strike. No, we gotta do 43 here. I'm keeping this potion. Hope. Didn't attack me. Incredible. Now we're good. Wait for feed. Okay. We keep our potion. We don't lose that much health. And we get through the Gremlin Leader fights alive. We get a shuriken, so we gain strength for playing three attacks. Two cards we already have. And a flex. Nah. Nah. 
Yeah. Get cleaved on. Bird nerds. Mocking us for taking rupture? I mean, it's nice to have more strength scaling. This is a really good Arma. Arma into upgraded offering. Draw five. We already upgrade the feed. It's great. Should have left one in Carnage range, specifically. Right, now we're wasting damage one way or the other. Oh well. Fifteen. Good fight. Um, True Grit? True Grit's okay. Would want an upgrade. Probably don't have one to give it. I don't think so. This is my current plan. I want the double heals before Collector. Could go for the Burning Elite. Seems crazy. What's the best possible ironclad card we could be offered right now? Battle Trance? We want more card draw. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Watto Peloso. Peloso? Courtesy of Watto. Did you hear about the man who tried to hook up his electric to the British monarchy? He was arrested for trying to steal the crown jewels. No refunds, was shut. Blue candle, huh? We have rupture? Huh. Bit of a long shot, but I'm going to pick this up just in case. There are some interesting interactions we could potentially get. Yes, yeah, a crown jewels is in the unit of measurement, just to be clear. I know sometimes the jokes fly over people's heads. That's okay. Bites? 32 max health, though. No way, right? No way. No way. No way. Okay. Yes way. That's card draw. Every time we play 10 cards, draw a card. Hmm. I like it. We get to Combust Rupture on turn one. We could even Duplication Potion Combust. I don't think I want to do that. Definitely take a lot of damage here, at least on turn one. It's all right. We don't get weakened, at least. Offering makes P-Strike kill. Although, corrupt, uh, Combust already would, I guess, technically. Bash P-Strike kills you, Strike Strike kills you, perfect. Feed coming up. I'll take one to feed. Feed, that's fine. Worth it, even. Objectively so. 
<clears throat> Bag of preparation. <clears throat> we draw two more cards on turn one. Operate another disarm or another combust. Uh, unfortunately, two combusts does not scale rupture twice as fast. But I will take the disarm. Get a heal and an upgrade. Let's upgrade Rupture for the boss fight. And maybe Offering as well for more card draw. A little unclear, actually. Someone said the Tungsten Rod was coming. Well, here it is. And there it goes. Guard is here. In case we want to take this run into shard mode. Don't have very many good attacks, huh? Yeah, this would have anti-synergy with Rupture. So the rod would not be very good at all, just to be clear. I might want Pommel Strike. Pommel Strike card remove seems okay. I do want to draw one. Yeah, Pommel Strike card remove, a very expensive strike upgrade, but a pretty good one. And I'm not taking that entrench. Will 50 hit points be enough for Collector? I have no idea. Might have to use the dupe pot on Rupture. We'll see. Nice. Yeah, that does seem pretty good. Let's get the metallicize down, too. We'll gain four strength per instance of self-damage, which makes playing this Ascender's Bane totally worth it. So I'm going to kill a minion here. Ooh, we got the resummon. Leaf does no damage to Collector. Mm, fine. Not enough, actually. Hmm. Need to leave this fight. As soon as Collector attacks, we're in big trouble here. Realistically, I get one more turn? That's bad. I think this has to be Bash Carnage. We go to single digit health, and if we get attacked again, there's no way we block, right? It doesn't matter if I've got 20 health or one. If we get attacked again, we're dead. So, it doesn't matter about armor. Bash, Carnage, and Prey. What we do have is 18 strength. So maybe there's a way? No. No, there is not a way. Wait, wait, wait. Ink Bottle, hold on. Ink Bottle into Pommel Strike, one time. Leave. So close. Aw, oh, so close. If this defend was Carnage, we'd have it. But we don't. GG. Collector gets us. GG. Tough run. Very cool that we almost made it to Act 3 with uh, what was, quite frankly, a terrible pile of cards. This one definitely struggled from not finding cards that are high enough quality. Yeah, I don't like Perfected Strike. Cleave as an open. You'd rather have something like Uppercut Immolators or Whirlwind. But uh, GG, definitely a tough run.
It's certainly possible that using the elixir at some point during that collector fight could have helped, but I'm not sure what we would have wanted to exhaust. Oh well. Oh well. The streak is back to zero. Would Bites have bought us a bit more time before losing? Yes. Yes, Bites might have gotten us past Collector. Bites definitely might have gotten us past Collector. All we needed was one more turn, so we wouldn't have needed a huge difference. Will we ever hit 20? We don't know. No one ever has, so, you know, it's kind of against the odds, right? Trying to do something some, no one's ever done before is always a, a tough endeavor. Strong soup preference. Mmm. Soup. How's it going, Don Oriana? Hey there, hi there. Keep going with Aspire, but I think I want to change characters for a bit today. Is it because Ascension 20 is hard? Yes. Yes, it is. I'm going to let chat choose. I don't often do this. Going to take a quick break, Twitch chat, refill the legs, stretch the water. When I return, we'll be swapping up the characters here. And you in Twitch chat can vote in the poll to help me decide. Back in a few, everybody. Don't go nowhere.
All right, Twitch back. Twitch. Yeah. All right, Twitch back. We're chat. This is what I was going to say there, and I'm going to stick with it. <clears throat> Looks like Silent won our little poll here. So we're going to do a silent run. For fun. Although I am going to do my best to make sure it's an actually good run rather than just uh, spewing here. Hmm. Ooh. 100 gold is the starting option, but all the shops are in terrible locations. And there's a mandatory early elite. At least it's Guardian. Uh, but this is the current obstacle. We have to get through this somehow. And unfortunately, none of the starting bonuses offer a guaranteed positive. Terrifying. I guess the regular transform is probably the best play. And I would probably transform a defend. Taking a curse for a rare colorless is a definitely iffy because we might have that curse into the elite fight. You know, you're telling me we take a pain or a doubt, get the elite and we're not dead? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Is swap bad on silent? Um, swap is bad when, when you have to do this. Swap is bad into early elite, generally speaking. Cheesy Bob, thanks for the 54 months. 54 is the atomic number of xenon. Despite being an inert gas, xenon can actually form some compound, compounds with fluorine. And Asken, thanks for the eight months of support. Happy Lithuania Independence Day. Let's go with transform. We're going to transform and defend. That way we don't lose out on damage. Even if it turns into a useless card. We get an unload in exchange for our defend. I'd say that's a very good card going into an early elite. It's no glass knife or die, 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 but it's certainly better than, say, tactician would have been. And we probably want to start out with three combats. I think we're going to the rest site before the elite, but we'll see. I'd like to have some flexibility here. And I'd also like to know if we're getting a potion early on. Play two defense looks good. With the unload, I expect we win this fight pretty handily, actually. We're way better than normal at Jawworm. This card does pretty obscene damage for one energy. More than twice as much as Strike, which is definitely going to give us an edge here. Look at that. Perfect Jawworm. Definitely a nice uh, start here. We want some more damage. We can take Poison Stab. I like Poison Stab because it's a little bit of a, a mixture between poison and direct damage. So you can scale it in either way. Backflip's also a very good card. but re Replaces the defend that we lost, actually. Given that we're down to defend, I really like backflip. I'm going to take backflip. I don't have enough incentive for this uh, poison stab, is from what I can see. If I was fighting Hexaghost, I would take P-stab. We're fighting Guardian, so I do kind of want backflip. Which could draw more cards for unload to discard. Brilliant. Unloads even enough damage to kill a louse, which ain't too bad. Two perfect fights. Get a spiky potion. Um. What? Do we just want a wraith form here on floor two?
Black Lava the Cat with a half year. What's the most polite way to greet the silent? Malaise. Yeah, two rares by floor two. Not too bad. I'm not going to say no, that's for sure. Um, and let's take the third fight. Which is two slimes. 13 health gray slime. Not on my watch. Unload is here. We take one either way. I'm actually tempted to play Wraithform here. So that I can triple strike next turn if we get attacked for 12. Or if we don't. Let's do it. Means I also don't redraw Wraithform. Yeah, we do get attacked for 12. I knew it. Ooh, but then this. It's fine, though. Great fight. You had the exceedingly rare actually play the Wraith form in an, in an Act 1 easy pool fight. And here's a better offensive card. Predator. 15 damage. Next turn, draw 2. For unload to discard. Not the world's worst dagger spray either, but I strongly prefer Predator. So we have two potions, although not great potions. We have good health, we have good cards. I say we can take an event here. We don't need to go five combats, although I don't always dislike five combats on silent does give you a certain form of advantage. Cleric is here to remove a card. I say we remove another defend. Because we've already added one backflip and one wraith form. Keep the strikes. They're doing work for now. Why is Cleric so ripped? It's the question we all wish we knew the answer to. Perhaps he can remove his fat as easily as he can remove our cards. He just purifies the fat, leaving only muscle. That was a pretty good fight. Blade Dance. This deck does want a bit more damage, and Blade Dance is a pretty good way to get it. 12 damage for one energy. Has synergies with a lot of things. Decent upgrade, too. Arguably better than the Unload upgrade. Although I think we upgrade Wraith Form first. Uh, and I think I'll take Poison Potion over the Liquid Bronze. I like the Ancient Potion to go with the Wraith form. Liquid Bronze doesn't do very much damage in any of the Elite fights. Sentries it's okay in. And we're going to upgrade Wraith form. We could, if we wanted to, fight the Burning Elite. But that would mean not fighting this Elite. We also get more money for the shop if we go this way. Yeah, I'm going to go for two elites. Thorns is okay against Guardian, but I doubt we'll need help in the Guardian fight. Or if we do, we'll get something along the way to help us with that. I'm really more concerned about the next floor. Hmm.
Hmm. If we play the Wraith form, we don't do any damage. Seems like a losing proposition. So we just play Predator Unload here. Draw seven. Then maybe we can redraw into Wraith form, or we can redraw into the damage to get a kill. We can also potentially consider using the Ancient Potion to block Vulnerable here. So this turn we could deal 12 plus 12, 24. Plus 5 more, 29. Plus 4 more from Poison next turn, 33. So I'd need to deal 18. That means if we draw 3 strikes, we kill next turn. If I play Strike, Strike, Blade Dance now. So I think I'd like to do that. Shouldn't need to use the Ancient Potion. Then if we draw any damage card or the Wraith form, we're good for next turn. But there is triple defend draw. That would be very bad. Even if that happens, we don't die. We get both. Both the kill and the Wraith form. If we play the Wraith form, we take one. So we should go for the kill. Not bad. Take 10, kill Grumlinob. Get a nib for double damage on every 10th attack, which makes Endless Agony a little bit better. Blur is okay, given that we've removed two defends already. Skip is also fine. I'll take one Endless, endless Agony. <clears throat> I like that it ups the pen nib twice. Trade health for a relic. I think we can click three times here. This could definitely backfire on us. I'm willing to click. Ouch. Success. Two clicks to get a ceramic fish. Nine gold per card. That's pretty good early on. I like it. And... Boot thingy, giving us 10 block on turn one. Love that on silent. And I love some money too, making this next shop actually pretty good. Between the money in the chest and the ceramic fish, we should be good here. <clears throat> uh, hopefully we're fighting sentries, that way we get block out of the boat thingy. But even if we're not, we have wraith form for leg of Ulan. Should be easy either way. It is indeed the leg of Ulan. And it ain't foolin'. If I wake with Predator Predator here, we have a 70% chance to get Wraith Form next turn to basically perfect the fight. Sounds good to me. There we go. Wraith Form. Could use Ancient Pot to block the decks down. I don't know if that actually matters here. I don't think so. I admit, I almost forgot about Pendip there. Almost. Flee, this can kill. 21's kind of hard. But with Unload, we can make it happen. Uh, right? This is 6. Oof, that's close. And the shivs keep coming. We get a ninja scroll. Three shivs on turn one. And another blade dance. It just feels appropriate. Stinky catalyst be gone. Take a blade dance. Take a ninja scroll. Shiv. Spectacular. And three shivs on turn one. It definitely makes this fight a bit easier. Against the four slimes here.
Perfect fight. Nah. Don't need any of these. Okay, we fought five small slimes, but what about one big one? Pen nib's good here. Oh, perfect. We can pen nib predator, and that's pretty much a KO. Bang. Yeah, we split it at one hit point. Nice try, nerd. Never stood a chance. Okay, here's a more serious poison card. Uh, that said, one of my favorite attacks for physical scaling silent, which it seems like we're going to do pretty well here, is Skewer, dealing damage X times. This works spectacularly well with Pen Nib. Uh, and can scale up to tremendous damage. I'm going to grab it here. Could work with something like Shuriken, too. Yeah, especially before a shop. Let's get some of these attacks upgraded. I really like Skewer upgraded, because it applies to each energy invested. Um, Predator is a pretty good upgrade as well. We do get another backflip. No good relics here, unfortunately. Unless you count Medical Kid, which I don't in this situation. But I do like backflip strike remove. Balance out the deck a bit before going into Guardian here. How's it going, Abyss Archer? I have not played Elden Ring on stream, actually, but I would like to uh, when the DLC launches. Presumably sometime this year. Although we have no concrete uh, release date, unfortunately. Would fighting Hexaghost make Medkit worth it? More so, substantially, yeah. Might also upgrade Neutralize here. Although Predator is probably our best pen nib recipient, so we should upgrade that. How much do I value seeing a shop just to advance the relic pool, says Emmerfish. Um, not at all, actually, because shops pull from the bottom of the relic list, so they're not actually removing the relics you would have gotten. You're just seeing relics that you weren't going to get anyway, and getting information on that. Um, not that I think there's actually any difference between those. When you don't know what the uh, random values upcoming are. But I, I usually don't care about what I see in the shop, relic-wise. Defend Survivor next turn is fine. Seems likely we're going to chip uh, our health down a bit in this fight. Not much we can do about that. Oh, but the agony is... This could be a problem. I'm not going to play him here, but... That means we're going to get more of them. Is it Wraith Form time? It might be. That would also let me ignore the big hit coming my way.
We'd have to use the Ancient Potion to use the Wraith form. Playing this without the Ancient Potion here would be suicide. So yeah, let's do that. Still take four. But then we don't die to this. Seems important. Doing pretty good damage, actually. Yeah, I do get to pen obscure for 60 here. And lose the agonies. Entirely convinced I made the right call with the Wraith form, but happy enough. Current state of the fight. Big six. Next turn. Hmm. Next turn's iffy. This is required. This is reasonable. Then we miss this. Hmm. No, I think Predator is required here. So we can't get hit by the big hit in two turns, or we're toast. So there we go. Predator, and then play Skewer for Pen Nib. Don't forget that. Go to five here. We should be able to kill it before it deals any more damage to us. At least that's the hope. We'll transform it now. Is that true? Yeah, because this will do 28, so yes, we can. Do I want to? Yeah, I do. Actually, 31? Hmm. This is going to be close, is what I'm seeing here. Hmm. Uh-oh. Might be dead. Unless maybe we get all three block cards next turn, then we can live. No. And I can't kill it, huh? Bummer. Truly a bummer to lose this way. We can both die. Can we? I don't see a way for them to die at all, actually. GG. All right, let's roll it back as the silent. That doesn't quite feel like a fair run for her. At least I don't feel like I lost that one because uh, I was playing the character poorly. That was just a, a tough run with a tough guardian fight. Right from the Niao choice, that one was tough. Try a silent boss swap on this one. Sacred Bark. Double potions. Let's do it. 
We have an extra boss relic this run, but no starting relic, no draw two on turn one, which definitely feels a bit painful. That's not to say it can't be awesome though. Yeah, Silent in particular can get uh, Alchemize, which makes a potion, which is quite cool. Surely this is always Eviscerate, right? Hexaghost maybe says take Poison Stab, but I really like Eviscerate as a damage card. The more times you discard a card, the cheaper it gets, and it really slaps quite hard, even if you just have to pay three energy for it. And if you draw it alongside Survivor, well, it's straight up awesome. Tactician would be ambitious. I think we should take a Dagger Spray to get some AoE. Another damage card for the deck. And I'm definitely going to buy some potions. Are you kidding me? With Sacred Bark? Give it to me. What do you got? Entropic Brew. Attack Potion. Excellent. Let's take the Entropic Brew and the Attack Potion. And then anytime we're facing damage, we can just potion for quite a while. Sounds like we could also go Elite Heavy here. I'd love to take three Elites with the power of Double Strength Potions. In Act 1 Elite Fights especially, the Potions can just carry us by creating a lot of value very quickly. Yeah, so here, for example, we're staring at damage that I don't have a way to avoid. So, let's attack Potion. We're a 60% chance to get another Potion anyway. Double backstab. Surprisingly, not even enough to full block. Let's take double dagger throw then. Which makes the eviscerate nice and cheap. can't also kill you, but we can double defend. Escape plan, deadly poison, outmaneuver. I'll grab an escape plan. Sometimes it's free block. Doesn't really take up space in the deck otherwise. And we get a relatively easy fight here, meaning I probably don't have to potion here. Lucky us. Yeah, Dagger Spray makes this easy as well. Draw 10 cards, then randomize the cost of cards. Oculated Gamble makes the Eviscerate very strong. Good upgrade later. Definitely take a gamble here. All right. It's looking good. We upgrade the Eviscerate or the Dagger Spray? I think the Dagger Spray... It's plus four and applies to all enemies. Makes it a much better card. The Eviscerate gets plus six. But we're not guaranteed to be able to play it. Although we are with the Sneka Oil, actually. This will apply for three elite fights. Actually, I think the Eviscerate upgrade is better. Upon review. Because we're going to rely on this as our knob solution.
Is Cal Campbell not a good early upgrade? I don't think so. I think in most fights, we only play this one time anyway. Including the elites. Hmm. Yeah, Sneko Eviscerate saved me. Draw exactly all of those cards. This is a good time for the Sneko Oil then, yes? Yes. Neutralize into Sneko Oil. Excellent. This is all we need to win the Lega fight. One cost Eviscerate. We get a free defend as well, and a free strike. lose on this turn, but that's fine. Whoops. Don't lose that much. <clears throat> Hopefully that doesn't matter. Any whoopsers? matters. <laughs> Dang it. Well, I did that to myself. I could save and quit to fix this, actually, but I'm not going to. My bad. We have no healing coming our way either. That's kind of uh, tough. I don't think I want any of these. Deflect is okay, but not into Grumlin Knob, it's not. There's an event? Okay. I think I'm okay with this. I need eight. Really like to draw a dagger spray next turn. Hmm. Take four. Yeah, take four. Six turns a week. Doppelganger. Next turn, draw X cards, gain X energy. I rather like Doppelganger early on. Kind of a way to sink your extra energy on a free turn into bonus damage or block on the following turn. And with Silent having combo cards sometimes, like Eviscerate, it can really multiply quite effectively. Meanwhile, Pear is here to basically double our hit points and maybe make it so that uh, two elites ain't so unrealistic after all. Just gonna Gamba here. Okay, three strikes. Really ain't it, huh? Bummer that this weak potion is no good here, but I'm pretty sure I need whatever potions are inside the Entropic Brew, so I'm going to do this. Aha! Boom. Okay. This fight ain't too bad. to eviscerate or a block card. Hey, and we do in fact get to eviscerate. 
So let's go Survivor the Strike. Block this with Neutralize, kill you with Eviscerate. That was perfect. Wow. Excellent fight. We score a Peace Pipe, meaning we can now remove cards from the deck at rest sites. Oh my. If we can get out of Act 1, this run has a lot of promise. We have to get out of Act 1. Might be difficult. I don't have to fight another Elite, do I? I don't have to. And yes, that Weak Potion mattered. And the, the targeting of the Weak Potion also mattered. I didn't talk about why I hit the front one, but... That was why. Uh-oh. Brood. Tiege with the six gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, folks. Thank you, Tiege, for the showing of support. Cool. Topple for two. So we get one big turn here. Although not a spectacular turn. Hmm. Please double defend here. Hmm. You know, I think this worked out. Okay, we get an attack potion. That makes the elite fight safe, so to speak. And if we want some more AoE and slash or some more discard, there is all that attack. Although it's not reliable discard because it can discard the eviscerate. It's still decent damage. Where's my channel name come? It comes from the uh, Baylor Demon of Dungeons and Dragons, which I made my first screen name way back in... I think 2004 and I've used that name on this name online ever since long long time ago uh, more specifically there's a misspelled version of the Baylor that appeared in the game Neverwinter Nights and that one I directly copied my username from You can, still in the, the original Neverwinter Nights campaign, uh, find the Baylor Lord, spelled exactly as it is here. Also, this turn sucks, yeah, but we have double attack potion, I guess. Although I shouldn't use it now. Neverwinter Nights 2 or BG2? I would pick BG2, although Mask of the Betrayer for Neverwinter Nights 2 was really good. Double heel hook. Yeah, no need to use this yet. Uh, in fact, we'd, we'd prefer to use this on a turn we're getting Dagger Throw or... Finisher would have more impact. Seems like a perfectly fine turn now. Don't see what benefit I get from delaying at this point. Double dash maybe is a thing. It double die die die. Die 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 is what I'm going to do in a moment. What if I double ganger? Reduces the chance we can gamble into eviscerate, doesn't it? these. Oh, if we 
actually, if we doppelganger, we might be able to do something like eviscerate gamble into eviscerate, which would get the kill here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use the ancient pot because if we don't kill next turn, we're dead. Doesn't matter if we're not vulnerable. We never block that, I don't believe. So hard cast it, then gamble. I didn't get it back. No, I didn't get enough. Dang. We died again. In Act 1. Tough life for a little silent. BG. Just a little bit short. Let's play a Deef of Run. A little bit of the old Deef. Died because of that one play? That's true. We could have lived the uh, the knob fight if I hadn't, hadn't had that mistake. Absolutely correct. Hmm. Another tough Act 1 layout. Look at this. Where's the easy stuff, game? Do we spend our gold for a Transform 2? I like Transform 2 on Defect quite a lot. I always Transform Strikes. I think Strikes are the worst card Defect has by far. We get, um, well, whatever this is. Okay. Seems good. Take two rares, no problem. Thank you, thank you. So do I, want, do I want three elites or do I want the burning elite? I guess is the only question. We can decide in a minute. Split here or here. Do I want a hard run when I'm at streak zero or when I'm at streak 19? I want it when I'm at streak zero, I think. Because then I can engage with it without being stressed out by it. If I'm doing it on a high streak, I'm stressed out by it. Although that might force me to play better, admittedly. Get zippity zapped. Oh, and I can take defrag to go with. Boot sequence here is actually quite solid, but let's grab that first focus. Gain one focus. To make our orbs do more damage. We got Electro Core Surge Defrag as the first three cards, and we're already down two strikes. It's a pretty insane start. Turn two Cultist Kill like we're playing Watcher here. We can take Hollow Reprogram or Compile Driver. I like Hologram here, although all of the new cards don't go to the discard pile. We can get back Zap, Dual Cast, or another Block card. This is a really important part of my late game Defect decks, is having ideally several holograms for uh, hand control. So getting the first one early feels good to me. Zip Zap. Yeah. If I Electro, we deal 12. 12 plus 8 is one short of a kill, so I can't kill this one. Bummer. Could use our potion, but be a huge waste of a potion. Thunder. Deal 24 damage, and if it kills an enemy, get the energy back. An excellent offensive card, good energy sink, great for minion blapping. Although, is it better than Streamline with Electro? Streamline is a lot more repeatably playable. Works better with the hologram. Hmm. I think I actually prefer Streamline here. Cool, let's try it. Ow. 
Well, that's lousy. As they say, I can't even kill anything with core surge here. We just have to take a million damage to our face. Ouch. The Agent Me, thanks for the 40 bits. Appreciate it. Hello? Um, Dreamline into dual cast, but that might take eight. Is there any line that's safer? I guess Streamline Defend is the safest. Always take three. It is unlikely. Actually, we can do an EV calc here, right? It's 100% um, take three, or it would be 75% chance to take zero, 25% chance to take eight. So expected damage two. That means the dual cast play is mathematically one better than the defend play. So we should do the dual cast line, I suppose, which never punishes us, right? Easy. Expected value. Yeah. Sure glad we thought that one through. Take a seek. Just goes to show, though, just like in, you know, any anytime you're mixing skill and RNG, you can make the perfect play and get punished for it. Kind of like poker, too. This is, uh... You just have to be able to roll with the punches. It is how Spire be at times. Hmm. Ouch. How do I value an early and strong common card versus a strong uncommon card? It's about how immediately useful the uncommon is. If the uncommon is immediately useful, then you just take the uncommon. So like Shockwave versus Pommel. I'm always taking Shockwave because Shockwave does more damage than Pommel Strike. The vulnerable means it does more damage than the pommel strike, basically. It's more output, you could call it. Speaking of output, beam cell is output. Although, with our block consistency, I'm taking this charge battery. Speaking of, a dad joke for Nikandros in the crowd. Did you hear about the defect that was arrested? They were charged with battery. Hmm. Suddenly, Gremlin Knob is terrifying because we have. How do we go down to 19 health from the easy pool? Went so bad so fast. Yikes, man. Debating which potion we use. I'm thinking this might be Electrodynamics plus Focus Potion. Need to do 15 per turn. And then just don't redraw this. Not that we're getting to redraw anything. We either kill next turn or we die. Those are the only options. Looks like I'm going to die? Well, hold on. What if I forge pot here? Each of these orbs will do seven. And I can orb-tacular. 
Actually, let me double check. If we just defrag or surge dual cast, what happens? We always draw a double strike next turn, so we can exactly calc our damage here. So we would deal 22 from evoking the lightning orb twice, plus 12 from the lightning orbs at the end of the turn, plus 11 from core surge, 45. Next turn we would do 6-6 six, six from the strikes and 6-6 six, six from two orbs, so plus another 24. 69. We're two damage short if we don't use the Forge Potion. So we should use the Forge Potion right now. Twenty-one, twenty-one, twelve. How much is that? Fifty-four. So we're still too short. We gotta play this. Okay, we do survive the fight, though. That's good. Get a dream catcher, meaning if we choose to rest, we get a card reward. That's good, because I think that's what I'm about to do. And a card reward, a charge battery, or a steam barrier. I like the steam barrier for the upfront block. Rather than having double charge battery. No love for rebound there with the streamline? No, no love for more damage cards with the hands we've been given. Although maybe Ball Lightning? Ball Lightning with Electro is pretty good. We'll take that. And that should be enough added cards for a while here, barring something spectacular. Definitely that. Probably Defrag Ball Lightning. Oof. Take 20? Maybe defend Ball Lightning. Skip the deep rag for this fight. That sounds more reasonable. I'm sure, we'll kill these three pretty fast. Pretty fast indeed. Heck wants a self repair. Symbiotic Virus gives us a Dark Orb at the start of each fight. That's kind of cool. Consume and Capacitor being offered. I wish we could take this Capacitor and feel good about it. It seems to me like it's a bit slow. Although, what if I skip this Elite? Maybe we can get through the Hexagos fight. Hmm. Hmm. Then I don't have any frost, and what happens? We block very well, and we win. Hmm. Let's try this. Ocean belt is nice. Money is definitely nice. And so is bias cog. We click. Oh, and we find potions for the belt. Hey, what a good time. Okay, okay. I like where this is going. Um, I was going to upgrade Defrag originally. Now I'm going to upgrade Seek so we can Seek for Core Surge Bias. Take another event. It's a merchant. Boo. Stinky. like your face. 50% chance for a potion. Maybe we should take a fight here. Surely we do pretty well at fights, right? I think so. Oh, that's a tough one, though. Okay. 
Not that tough, though. For surge biased, or do we get electro down? I think I want to get electro down. Can't be biased electro, because then I'm taking 11 to the face. Like steam barrier electro. Or we could do the biased with the force surge. I like this. Putting the Dark Orb in front means a dual cast will kill the Spike Slime. We always get attacked again for 11 this turn. It's a bit bad. Maybe I can get them both. Let's see. Biased. Is there seven apiece? 21 plus 12 is 33. So what we do is strike, strike, ball lightning. The ball lightning's direct attack damage kills the spike slime here, which means the dark orb kills the looter, and the, or hits the looter rather, and then the three lightning orbs will kill the looter. Or we could just strike, strike, ball lightning this guy, and the lightning orbs kill them both, right? With electro in play? It's fine either way. So we have a couple ways to, to kill. But I like this line with the Dark Orb targeting the front one. That way, even if Electro wasn't in play, this would be the line. Kind of cool. But yeah, that was perfect. We we get through the fight. We don't spend any potion. We don't take any damage. We can even take a genetic algorithm if we feel like we want one. Which I think that I do. I'm not really sure. About that. Hmm. This upgrade is also a little uncertain. I think it's just upgrading bias cog, but there's some other options. Got pretty low health into Hexaghost, which is just fine by me. That means Hexaghost's attacks deal less damage. Drawing bias before core surge is not what we wanted to see here, unfortunately. It's all right. I do think I wanted to use this. Charge battery, core surge. I can seek for a power to put in play. Might as well be defrag. And let's draw the seek so I don't draw it next turn. Next turn I can play capacitor electro and still defend. Although I should probably play the dual cast. Let's go dual cast, defend Electro, skip capacitor here. And now the bias gets played. Took a while. Could be a short fight from here. Gotta make sure this gets played. Okay, we're through the Hexaghost fight. With three potions, although I wouldn't call them good potions. Second Core Surge, second Electro, or first Meteor Strike. Double Core Surge is kind of cool. Makes it easier to do Core Surge biased. Makes it easier to abuse these speed potions, too. Two Electros is often redundant, especially when you have a Seek in my mind. Let's take the Core Surge. No Stecco here, just three flavors of Energy Relic. 
lose gold, make enemies deal more damage, or prevent ourselves from seeing what the enemies are doing are the three options. I don't love any of these options that much. Phylostone very notably makes the Corrupt Heart a lot tougher. Skip. No, it's not a skip here. This deck definitely wants more energy. So we'll take a Runic Dome. Can't see what the enemies are doing, but we can see what we're doing. Which will hopefully be setting up Frost Orbs. Oh no. <laughs> the Spire really is not kind today. Terrifying. Uh, is this way? At least I should be, in theory, good against Act 2 Elites. And our boss is Collector. Should have taken Ectoplasm. Let's see how this goes. We know this enemy attacks for a lot on turn 1. I'm going to go ahead and Speed Potion this fight. Great speed potion. Pot for 20 damage, not bad. <clears throat> With the energy relic, I don't feel like turbo is that good. Do I want a stack or a recursion? Also, I don't think so. Pretty sure no. A man with ridiculous clothing appears at the entrance to bar us. Upgrade a card, transform two, or remove a card and upgrade one at random. I'm really down to transform two more strikes here. Let's try again. Roll em. Beam cell, hello world. Should have punched him. All right, more enemies where we know what they're doing. We each attack for 11 on turn one. Hit the mugger here. Electro dual cast would kill you. Any other good ways to block this? Really? Well, I could take charge battery hologram. Do charge battery hologram, charge battery defend. That's 14 plus 8. That is perfect block, right? Okay. We have six energy on this turn. Hopefully we're not taking damage here. We'll be... I want to core surge this one. Because you die anyway, right? 50-50 to not, not even take a hit. But we do, of course, take a hit. That's just how our day is going. Another unupgraded hologram. Feels like a bit of dead weight. Static Discharge works well with the 
Electro, but it's kind of garbage with Runic Dome. I'm going to skip these. Four, 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 four is only 16, so let's do one here to make it die next turn. What a boss relic that lets you choose three cards to draw on turn one. Be too OP. I don't think so, actually. I think that would be kind of reasonable. Core Surge Bias. I don't really need to uh, Core Surge in this fight, mind you. So we should play Genetic, then. That way, if we are getting attacked... It's not miserable. Words. Things worked out, though. Good. Upgraded card. Click. Go for the Eyes also has some merit, because that thing can tell you if you're being attacked or not. Hmm. What path do I want to take to the shop? Which of these is less suffering? This one gets a second rest side, actually. Let's go this way. That means taking one more fight, which might mean another potion before the Elite. We might die more immediately, but I'm hoping we won't. Hoping. Keyword, hoping. Okay, are we being attacked? No way to know. Let's hope so. Otherwise, this turn is bad. Dang it. Ah, crap. Dome! Is there anything I can do about that? I don't think so. The speed pot here. Let's block a bit more. Nave Greed, thanks for the 33 folk raid. Although I regret you, your timing... Might be a bit bad, as you're likely about to watch Defect bite the dust here. As we go into an Act 2 Elite fight with 11 health and a cool-headed plus. Okay, okay, maybe too little too late, but uh, with the amount of focus we have, it's certainly welcome here. It's going to take a bit of a miracle to get through this fight. Oh boy. That's not a miracle, we're dead. Yeah, we're uh, instantly toast here. We needed a decent draw turn one against a different fight than this to ever get through this node. GG. GG. But that means that you've all tuned in just in time for a fresh run. Thought that was a broken run? Well, the defect was broken at the end of it. How fresh we talking? So fresh I've not played this character this month. That's how fresh. Purple Lady. Greetings, Jews. Now, I'm in the mood for some revenge on the Spire here. And I see it. I see the revenge visualized before me. It takes the form. Eruption plus. Is eruption turn? This is eruption turn. Good old Watcher, all about swapping back and forth between stances. Dish out massive damage to foes. 
He's pretty good at it, too. Sometimes. Only if you remove her defense, though. Alright, a good Jawworm fight. And a very good first card. Sands of Time says, deal 20 damage for 4 energy. But each time this card ends a turn in your hand, decrease its cost by 1. You can also just hard cast it sometimes if we just play it for 4 energy. Sometimes we can end the fight nice and quick like that. Let's take an Empty Mind. Hard Draw plus Stance Exit is a nice little utility combo. This helps us get the Sands of Time into our hand a bit faster, I think. I was learning Watcher when she first came out. It was miserable. Um, Eruption cost two even when upgraded. Vigilance drew cards instead of blocking. And none of her cards had custom art, so it was a literal headache to try to play. But after a few rounds of player feedback, she settled into something a lot more reasonable. And I think a bit overly strong. But that is okay. We all love her. Oh yeah, my title is not right. Wasn't right for the defect runs either. Empty Mind can be energy generation along with the palm cards we have, and that's going to allow us to start to do silly nonsense of the spicy variety. Meditates even better, allowing us to get a card from the discard pile, put it into our hand, and retain it. Particularly like it with Sands of Time, because you can play the Sands of Time and then return it for another discount. Crush Joints is also good to multiply the damage of our next attack. I like the Meditate more. Will there ever be a fifth character? No, the devs are done with Slay the Spire, so there will never be any more official characters for this game. Although modders will continue to add stuff, of course. Sir Penguin! Thanks for the Prime sub. The Penguinius. Yes, yes. Hiya. We know. And one of my favorites, early game, late game, mid game, doesn't matter. Cut through fate. Deals damage. Look at the top two cards of the draw pile and then draw a card. You can discard one or both of the cards you see. So you basically get to choose one of three cards to draw with Cut Through Fate, although you don't get to know what the bottom card is. Unfortunately, we're facing a plus max health Gremlin Knob as our first opponent here. But fortunately, we're going to slaughter it anyway. Mr. Norbert. And I think I get to play Vigilance here? I have to do quick math. Brings us back to four energy. Yeah, I can play all of this. So yeah, so that's super duper duper lethal. If I use the dupe pot. Is there ever a line where I can kill without the dupe pot? 
I don't think so. So I'm just going to go Vigilance Strike. Take three here. Yeah, we have to do Pot to kill. Not too bad, considering that was a super-powered Grumlin Knob on floor six. Get plus one strength forevermore, which makes all of our attacks hit even harder. Do I think the devs should have added ways for each character to make curses a benefit, the way Ironclad does? No, I think it'd be cooler if that was a colorless card function that just every character had access to via those colorless cards. I don't think I want any of these, although with plus one strength, flying sleeves is not bad. I'd say we probably already have enough attacks. Watcher doesn't need much. Just watcher things. Upgrade another card or take the warped tongs, upgrading a random card each turn. Problem is, though, that I have to have a pain in the deck for a long time, so I'm going to upgrade a card. Be it Meditate or Sands of Time. Let's make it Sands of Time. Make that big slap even harder. I'm going to kill you now. I can Meditate Eruption. And, not and, I can meditate eruption. Cool. Can miracles, sands of time, vigilance. Take two, that seems like the simplest play here. Ginger makes us immune to weaken. Blasphemy lets us just kill everything instantly. That's a cool card. Enter Divinity, gaining three energy and dealing triple damage. But die on your next turn. So the idea is you have to play the Blasphemy and then win. We also get a Mummy Hand, encouraging us to take powers. Although I'd say for Watcher, powers are relatively weak. We still want Mental Fortress or Rushdown, perhaps. I really like the Blasphemy with the Sands of Time, because the Sands of Time retains. So it's easier to find together. Time to wake up, Legavulin. Lorp. Blah. And that's what uh, Blasphemy can do for us. We can get turn one kills on all sorts of things, including sometimes bosses. We add Mantra the regular style. Yes, we do. Can the death debuff be nullified by artifact? Nope. It's a buff. Enjoy. Oh, we do get a card removed. Good. I want to get rid of defense. And I'm going for the fourth elite, because why wouldn't I? Not the time to play Blasphemy. Oh yeah, uh, Cloak Clasp blocks the remaining four. How nice. Only if I don't play the Strike, though. Uh. 
maybe? I don't think so. Grab an event. Our rewards aren't that good. Another remove? Perfect. Defends out. On Watcher. There's no need for defense here. Did we just blasphemy? <laughs> Sands of time. He dead. Good fight. Get a free tiny chest. Offered a tantrum with Vajra. Pretty spicy. Although where this, this deck is going, I don't think I want Wrath so much. But I actually don't think I want this tantrum. Normally, normally I'm all about tantrum here. But with Blasphemy Prostrate, I think it's worse than normal. Dex potion's no good. Tantrum does a lot of damage in Divinity. Well, kind of. Let's upgrade this first. All right, Hexa Ghost. Time for you to be Hexa Toast. Just gonna be very careful not to click on Blasphemy here. This card. Just biding our time here. This is a really good time to showcase the power of Meditate with the Sands of Time. Play the Sands of Time, and then meditate it back into our hand, getting a discount on the Sands of Time. We can do that again, actually, which I would like to do. Sands of Time. Return the Sands of Time with a discount. And oh, what's that? Ten Mantra, you say? Perfect. GG. Ghost is toast. Ooh, more Mantra? Devotion is very strong here, allowing us to scale our mantra a lot better, as well as working with the mummified hand. Unfortunately, it's not even close to as good as Scrawl is here, because Scrawl can do everything that Devotion does instantly by giving us Blasphemy plus a full hand, and then everything is dead. So, also it blocks for 10 with Cloak Clasp. Definitely prefer Scrawl there. Hmm, can we take a black star with this deck? Or do I need Slaver's Color? I kind of like the idea of taking black star here and accumulating even more relics. Let's do it. I think it's fun. And I think we've got really good relics so far that should give us an edge in elite fights, especially when combined with our very good cards and our very good money spending. Somebody said two elites max act two. It almost came true, except for this one late elite here. I also owe the chat a dad joke courtesy of Virtual256.
Did you hear about the watcher who lost all of her employees because she had greasy hands? She had to let go of her staff. No refunds to shut. Conclude with a plus. Don't think so. Could have had a cool halt plus tantrum build, but we're doing divinity things instead. That pun was hard to handle. Sure was. Divinity in a jar. Unai in a jar. Preserved insect would make... I guess with Black Star, preserved insect is kind of awesome, right? Yeah, we want that. Toolbox is cute, but not as cute as removing a defend and replacing it with another cut through fate. This is the kind of deck I like to have. Damage, damage, divinity, draw, and mantra. Just need one more prostrate and this deck is really going to pop off. In the good way. Oh, and what's that? We can remove another card. You got it. I'll keep one defend. Let's lose a strike instead. The answer was elegance, of course. And look at this. The more removes you get on a Watcher run, I think the more stable it usually is. Very strong, once there's no longer very many strikes and defends left. Could go here. All right, I'll give Tiny Chest another plus one. Merchant. Do I ever remove Eruption over Strike? Pretty much never. Um, maybe if you're in a really Divinity heavy deck. But you have to be in a very odd state to want to remove Eruption. Things have gotten very strange indeed when you're doing that. Is this three block or five? I can't remember. Five. Good. So cloak, cloak clasp checks after meditate puts the cards in our hand, basically. So we can go eruption, strike, strike. Fear no evil. Block with prostrate. Cloak clasp once again makes up the difference here. Beautiful fight. Explosive potions, probably better than the block potion for the elites here, especially with reduced health on them. We want something that can just kill gremlins or a slaver quickly. There's the second prostrate. Okay, this is going to get cool. Really cool. Excellent. 
Look at them, they're so tiny. How adorable. Um, scroll next. I think scroll next. I need to know what my options are here. Yeah. We can go Vigilance into Eruption. This does 10. This does 16. This does 10. We can full block this turn. Excellent. Blasphemy next turn gets me the kill, probably. Although it's not next turn, it's this turn, right? Hmm. Doesn't matter. This does 26 damage. Just cleanly kills you. And I take three. Or I could try to do something different than that. I guess I could do Fear No Evil Empty Mine, Sands of Time. Arguably, that's better. That's kind of better. Would have been better if I targeted somebody else with the Fear No Evil. But yeah, taking three is fine. Too risky to blasphemy here. Great fight. We only took three damage. We score the Toy Ornithopter, healing us five upon using a potion. Omomori, negating our next two curses. And Wallop, dealing damage and then giving us block equal to the unblocked damage dealt. One of my favorite attack cards on Watcher. This is several good upgrades here. Scrawl is excellent. Blasphemy Retaining is excellent. But I'm going to prioritize one of our two Prostrates here. Because that gives us five Mantra exactly per draw through of the deck. Meaning we can get to ten Mantra much faster with that plus one. Don't like the fat gremlin. Kill that one first. Could the beer pot to get the sneaky gremlin? I don't think I want to, though. Will I nearly never upgrade that second Prostrite? It has some use as an upgrade, but... Yeah, potentially nearly never. Hmm. If I can draw to the... Sands of Time, then I think I can kill with Blasphemy here. We would go to six energy, right? Seven with the miracle. This does 81 damage. I'm pretty sure that just kills. Certainly. We get block galore. Thread needle. Four plated armor. Boot thingy. 14 armor on turn two. And either a cut through fate plus or another scrawl. I'll take second scrawl, but both of these are awesome. We might upgrade that second prostrate if we wanted to get to 10 mantra in one deck cycle. For example, if I added a prey plus, then I would upgrade the second prostrate. Removal is 100. Might have 100. You don't have to go to the shop, but then I don't get to upgrade. Eh. We have 100. Good. And I'll take the Lantern, too. The more cards I remove, the better. I don't think I want to try Blasphemy here. There might be a kill on both of them, just right away. Not confident enough, though. That there is.
I can meditate scrawl if I want to. That's kind of badass. That's more damage. Yes, meditate scrawl, please. Oh, they just didn't attack again. Well, convenient. None of these are a prey plus. So I'm out of here. Please upgrade. Oh, there's so many good upgrades. I'm going to upgrade the scrawls first. The cheaper these are, the more cards we can play in one big powerful turn. And the better things will be. I'm just here to remove cards. Lita Blade, thanks for the mini raid with your three friends. Joining us for a very divine Watcher run. Where we're getting lots of mantra and dealing triple damage pretty often. Welcome, welcome. So now that we've upgraded both, uh, upgraded one of the prostrates, we can do this play both of them, meditate both of them, enter divinity on turn two kind of deal. And the more cards we remove, the more frequently that's going to happen as well. I can discard both of the phases here. Not that that matters particularly. Because those nerds are dead. They're cut through fate. need one. I liked the one that said plus earlier. Oh well. Let's just get more relics, eh? So far the Black Star has not been a problem. The elites have been very easy. This one probably no exception here. But we get the nasty pattern. Nasty, nasty. Actually, might have been a kill there with Blasphemy. With Blasphemy Sands of Time. I didn't even think about that. I was more focused on getting the turn two divinity with this scrawl here. But yeah, there might have been a Blasphemy kill there. We get Duvu Doll with Omomori's a little sad. Or combat with one strength per curse. At least it's another plus one to go with Vajra. Cut through fate. We also upgrade two skills at random. Very likely this hits good things. Scrawl. Excellent. Well, that's what I was going to upgrade. Uh, now we can upgrade the Blasphemy at last. Seems like a reasonable upgrade. I'm also almost down to remove it. Is Duvu better or worse before Ascension 10? Definitely um, worse. Being a guaranteed one is, is really nice. Ideas for a block plan in a run like this. Mental Fortress is going to be a lot of block. Wallop is going to be a lot of block. We can actually block just with Wallops if we get another one and if we can consistently bonk for big damage. Um, we're actually already starting to form a block plan too with the Relics. Cloak Clasp plus Thread Needle plus Horn Cleat counts for quite a bit actually. Talk to the Hand and Mental Fortress are probably the easiest ways to block with a deck like this, but they're far from the only ways. Alright, Chump. Chump here should be easy. Be 
very easy. Wallop, for example, would block 33 here. Oh, I should have, shouldn't have scrolled so early. Or I should have scrolled before playing one more card, rather. That's fine. Blasphemy would kill here. Maybe with a fear potion. This and this. Blasphemy gets us the final kill. GG. Jump gets dumped. In terms of more unusual ways to do a late game block plan, Spirit Shield can be one of those ways, giving us block per each card in hand. The more cards you can put into your hand, the better a card Spirit Shield is. And with two scrawls and a meditate, it's actually pretty good, so I'll pick this up. Uh, since we haven't yet formed a decisive answer to the late game. Busted Crown, Coffee Dripper, or Sacred Bark are the boss options. I think Coffee Dripper is extremely free here. We get one energy per turn. Desperately needed in exchange for never resting, which we didn't plan on doing anyway. Sir Penguin says, I just won a silent run where I astrolabed a curse to get a better curse for Duvu Doll. First time for everything, I guess. No kidding. It's always cool to see uh, transforming a curse payoff. Fun thing you can do, for example, with Omomori. If you transform a curse when you have Omomori, the Omomori will block the new curse and you effectively remove it. What's my favorite soundtrack and why is it the champ boss music? It would be the chant boss music if it weren't for the heart boss music being even better. I like the heart music extremely, extremely well. And it's one of the reasons I still enjoy the Spire soundtrack almost 8,000 hours in. If I already had two good late game potions at the end of Act 2, would I be more likely to take Sozu or Sacred Bark? I think more likely to take Sozu. Does that work with Necrocurse? No, because you cannot remove Necronomicurse. Which means you also cannot transform it. Same with uh, Curse of the Bell. Cannot be removed also means cannot be transformed. Perfect. Tiny chest, go! Can I get a double tiny chest proc? Can we do six? Oh, we can? One, two, three, four, five, six. Tiny chest, freaking go. So we're going to get... Eight relics from elites, two times four, and we're going to get three relics from treasure chests because we're going to get three chests this act with tiny chest and the normal one. So 11 relics incoming. Relic bar will fill up entirely. Seems good. How many relics do you want? Yes. Wait, double spiker? 
my spiker solution. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's Wallop. Also Spirit Shield. Wallop makes block and then we take the return damage, I believe. Correct. Wasn't too bad. Worship. Gain five mantra. Yes. I would like to do that. Because that means we're going from two turn divinity to one turn divinity. And we're freaking rich. Can it really be this easy? Why stop at 11 relics? Upgrade two attacks. Upgrade two cutthroat fates, please. Upgrade two cutthroat fates. Good enough. No strikes. All these bad runs sacrifice themselves for one really good run. No kidding. Here's another way we can block the late game. The Abacus. Whenever we shuffle the draw pile... Gain six block. The more cards you can draw, the more frequently you can reshuffle, the better that is. I also like Foresight here. We do have Mummy Hand, don't forget. We have not yet played a power this run. I also like Secret Technique, which can fetch Scrawl. Is Pennib excessive or fun? It's fun. Maybe a little excessive. But not in a bad way. Dunk a strike too. Do I want the smooth stone? It does make the prostrates block for slightly more, so it helps. But it's not huge. But I wasn't planning on going to another shop anyway, so sure. We'll take that too. We buy three relics there. So 14 relics this act. Ludicrous, I say. Just ludicrous. Simply absurd. Okay, that's instant divinity, which makes this wallop slap like a truck. Bonk. Yeah, I like the pendant to go with the wall up to make even more block. Basically. Double scroll, huh? Give me blast me next turn. Seems reasonable. What if I was divine anyway? Divine anyway. Distilled chaos with a blasphemy in the deck? I'm not even going to pick this up. No way. Absolutely no way. As far as late game block plan goes, weakening enemies can also help. Sash Whip is not amazing, but it's fine. With an upgrade on it, anyway. I will accept a Sash Whip. Yeah, as a reminder, actually, exclamation point, uh, Mayhem Heart? Or is it Heart Mayhem? 
Yeah, there it is. Heart Mayhem. What is the worst that could happen? Reminder, never ask yourself that question. And Nib's ready, you say. Um, which means... Hmm. <laughs> Dead Branch. Whenever you exhaust a card, add a random card to your hands. Don't do a whole lot of that, actually. The Scrawls exhausts. The Blasphemy exhausts. The Secret Technique currently exhausts. Not a lot, though. Could be good, could be bad. Actually, not sure I trust it here. We already are able to get our hand to be full. In fact, after we play Scrawl, it adds a random card to the discard pile. I don't like that. I think I'm going to leave the dead branch on the ground today. This deck does not does not need it, quite frankly. Transform a card. Strike. Be gone. You are now... Consecrate. Which is free and does damage to more targets. It's just better. It's just better. It's just way better. All of these, then give me Consecrate Stands of Time. That should kill, actually. Pretty sure that just kills. Bonk. More card draws, great. Omniscience. Choose a card in the draw pile, play it twice, and exhaust it. Or, this is no mental fortress, but with the mummy hand, might be good enough. Gain four block per scry, working with the cut through fates and the foresight. What is omniscience going to double? Oh yeah, it's instant divinity with worship. That's pretty good. I do like that. But I do like the Nirvana. I'm going to take the Nirvana here, partially because of the free uh, upgrade. Boat thingy. Boat thingy's pretty good. As a reminder, we do get one more chest. So I can skip this relic, take the blue key here, or skip this blue key, rather. Take it later. Take this relic. I'm going to do that. Turn one block against heart is pretty good prevents us from getting bopped by things like this, too, sometimes. Very good. And here's the second wall up. 
This should be the last thing we need for our block plan. Two wallops means we draw them pretty reliably. And if we can consistently enter Divinity, then these block a ton. So this will be cool. We get to do this without the aid of Mental Fortress or Talk to the Hand. I quite like that. Draw the scroll anyway. You got it. You're going to have a bad time in a second, Giant Head. Three hundred and nineteen damage. Yes, that's a turn one giant head. This says scry on it. Good enough. Another relic? Not for four hundred gold, I won't. And a ch treasure chest containing bottled lightning. Could have bottled a scrawl. Oh well. We'll take the blue key because we have to. And fight Reptomancer once again. Gambling chip. We can discard cards on turn one. And sundial. Every three times we shuffle the draw pile, gain two energy. Working in tandem with the abacus to reward us for drawing cards. Got lots of relics now. Well into page two here. If a recall here. Yeah, Blackstar is such a snowball. Even got the tiny chest snowball. Scrawl up deck. Scrawl up. Who are you calling a scrawl up? Guaranteed to go divine. Uh, give me cut their fate plus that as well. Seems perfect.
I want Wallop. Wallop and Sash Whip. Yeah, Spirit Shield, Sash Whip. And Sundial value, good. Blasphemy kills next turn. If only these relics weren't uh, set up in this way. Oh well. Let's see if we can reset uh, both of them a little bit here. Punish us somewhat for certain behaviors. It's hard to get set up against this opponent, though not impossible. Go to Vine right now and play a bunch more cards. Kind of seems like a waste compared to going to Vine next turn. Can I play enough cards this turn to make it worth it? I can, yeah. Let's set up for next turn. Miracle Meditate. Miracle Meditate. I can finish off Time Eater, though. That's no, not worth it. Just get ourselves set up here. Give me Sands of Time. Give me Worship. Nib sands of time again here. Success. Although that means winning with both relics on zero, I'm okay with that. Get out of here. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this mantra? You prime your stick with divine energy, dealing 2912. When was the last time I took damage? No idea. 
We have so many relics. Just so many. Another Nirvana? I think I want Weave. This Duplication Potion is probably better than a Bottled Miracle here. You can dupe Nirvana or something. Or something, indeed. I'll lose the Defend. No starter cards remain except for Vigilance Eruption. Meticulously purged one at a time. Perfect time for Shard, right? Is it? At least Akabeko does something. The rest, I skip. Can you run out of relics that are shown in the shop? It is possible, although very, very difficult. You'd have to have three or four bars full of relics. If that happens, you'll see a relic appear called the Circlet, which is basically a placeholder relic that only appears if there's nothing else the game can generate for you. Cool. So Akabeko Divinity Consecrate deals 45 damage to both of them. Then you die. Then you die. Fine. What happens if you exhaust every card in your hand and deck? Well, then you have nothing left. You can't play any more cards or do much of anything. I think, I think you can see something like this happen in exclamation point empty. I don't. I didn't get rid of every card, but I did get rid of all my attack cards at least. So usually you lose, is what happens. Inner peace. Cards for nerds. All right. What we have here is a very strong watcher run. That's going to do some nasty stuff to the heart. So do we do pot the Nirvana or what? It's our only power, so it's arguably our best dupe here. Let's do it. Could have also duped Foresight, actually. Maybe that was even better. It was not our only power, I just realized. I was lying. Sands of Time Wallop Meditate. Guess I can just Sands of Time Meditate. It's gonna put all of the stinky stuff in the draw pile. Maybe I don't want that. We've got Swift Pot, we've got Double Cut Through Fate, we'll be fine. Go Sash Whip, actually. I do want to weaken it. But yeah, I draw all five statuses guaranteed because they all go into the draw pile. Actually, wait, no, I discard them all. Get the heck out of here. Stinky statuses. Wrecked. And I start the turn with 28 block because we are a fair and balanced character. It's 
Spirit Shield Wallop Sash Whip should block Plenty, although that's the wrong order. No, we want to go Cut Through Fate, Wallop, Sash Whip. That's better. And nib the Wallop here. A donk. We can you. In some Mantra. Oh, and I can meditate. How convenient. Give me back. Prostrate and Wallop? Can't do a double damage Wallop. That's okay. Yeah, Prostrate Wallop. Blanc via Bonk. That is unnecessary for no evil. Now we can go Eruption, Wallop, Fear No Evil. Twenty-eight Blanc. Basically full blocking this hit just with the Fear No Evil. Discord Burn. Block eight. Feels like a good chance to scrawl. We can do quite a bit of damage. Or apply weaken. A bad draw, actually. Hmm. Raw strength for guaranteed divinity and wallop is block. We'll do that. want to, we can pen nib the wall up for 82 block. A lot of block. I think I will do that, actually. Just because I can. 84, rather. That's even more. Might as well cap damage, too. So it was both excessive and fun. As it should be. Okay. Hello. <laughs> no divinity this turn. Sad. Third eye is better blocked than Wallop, then. I'll take the damage. We actually do get hit for a little bit. I guess I could have just Swift Potion there. Would have been the easy answer. made me bleed my own blood. Nobody does that. Bonk. GG. A thorough and decisive victory. GG. GG. Quite the bonking. That's the final score on that one. Eight perfect elites beyond perfect. 37-37. It's a dang good score for a run.
That run certainly packed a wallop. Hopefully that gave a few people some ideas as to how to build Watcher Block in the late game. Usually we give out the easy answers of Talk to the Hand and um, Mental Fortress, but not every run gets to find those cards, so sometimes you got to use a different method, and this run did that very well. GG. GG. Would I have added Blasphemy in a deck that could already go Divine with Mantra? Probably not. You could see that as we got further into the run, we stopped using the Blasphemy so much. But it was really nice for a couple of Act 1 fights, and it could have been useful into Act 2 and Act 3 if we hadn't found more Mantra. And so shall I, Twitch chat. Chat? Twitch chat. I would agree. Watcher is the easiest class to lose on a small miscalculation. Watcher a lot of times feels less like you're playing against the Spire and more like you're playing against your deck. Trying to figure out how to manipulate your draws or what order to play your cards in in order to um, get through everything nice and clean. Valor in Sky with a 30 months of support. Alas, Twitch chat, that is actually all the time I've got for us today. So I'm going to be winding the broadcast down a little bit earlier than we usually do. We will be back tomorrow with some more action. Plan on doing some more of the puzzling game Patrick's Parabox tomorrow. Uh, I think we might also finish our Queen's Hand playthrough of Against the Storm. So we have just the sealed forest left to do. See you later, Sacraville, French Fry Apocalypse, Fat Camels, Thumamir, Thega Barito, Cross Up MK, Buddha Bob, Jambel, Arcanum Regis with the 17 months. Many weekend waffles for you, dear Twitch chat. All right, folks, thank you so, so much for watching. Have a good one. Until next time, my friends, stay cozy. Toodaloo.